Good evening, morning, afternoon, whatever applies to you. And welcome to another EuroLeague. It is the end of regular season. What a shame. Uh, see, I actually enjoyed regular season, as I always do, because, you know, no matter what the quality of the games is, it's just exciting as fuck. Like, going into that final day, there were so many ramifications and different things that would possible or uh, whatever. Like, there was so much on the line that just the top seeds, the bottom seeds, like who makes playoffs, like basically everyone was playing for something. And I think that is the really big strength of this format. So I'm all for it. Like, does it mean you'll always get the right result? Probably not. But then again, we've got three fucking splits now, don't we? So it's not like your season's just over and you're off to, you know, wherever you chaps like to holiday. Uh, so yeah, anyway, of course, I am joined as always by Mr. Kira and one... Let me get Google up. That I've even heard of. You don't even need Google for this okay, one. Right. You don't even need Google for this one. Because we're also joined by uh, Mokuba Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh. Right. So there you go. Even wait, I... Wait, the younger brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, the, yeah. the one that keeps on getting, you know, kidnapped and, you know, right, well, like yeah. provides a, an emotive great. force to Kaiba's, like, decision-making. Man, exactly. I, I, lo I just love how they just mess with history. And it's like, by the way, all world politics were decided by card games, which can actually kill people. That just peak anime right there fantastic yeah well speaking of which by the way nymera yep. did joke last time about you know so deep into the weeb culture now that one day i might just have a fucking you know my anime list or whatever well yep. that day Don't has come me. that you day has on. come right i am gonna very quickly run you through my list so far it's not a oh, particularly wonderful. long okay. list so you know to get everyone up to speed on where we currently are on my own anime arc if you like okay. um I won't tell you the username because, you know, I don't want people I to... to I, well, to I, I will send you the username. <laughs> all I'll say is death to weebs was taken, uh, as was death to all weebs. So, you know, if you're really smart, you can probably think of some other connectives that might lead you to the account. Uh, but I'll say no more on that. So, yeah, just to run you through where we are now. And by the way, apparently my average score given is a 5.2. So there you go. But by the way, just so you know, for me as I think it should be for everyone, five is average. Okay. Because yeah, it's, that is, great. it is, yeah, if you go zero to 10, five is in the middle, five is average. So I'm just going to run you through. By the way, two omissions from this list. I have not included Spirited Away or Perfect Blue because it's been so long since I saw those right. movies. I can't mm -hmm. really gauge. I do remember liking both of them, but yeah. So I'll just go through these very quickly. So Cowboy Bebop, by the way, you'll see most of these are like the super mainstream, like you have to watch these, what, so that's why, you know, there's a bit of a theme to it. I gave a five. Uh, I was going to give it slightly higher, but then I was like, you know what? No, why would I? It's just very, I don't know. Would you I give it, sorry? A five. I just you, thought... Wait, Cowboy Bebop was yeah, a five. A five, yeah. I, I just, uh -huh. I, they just, to me, there just wasn't much to like about it. Like, it wasn't bad. I thought... The dialogue was better than most animes. I didn't like the episodic style particularly because I didn't really feel like it was going anywhere. Uh, I understand that there is some kind of like longer um, pass through payoff or whatever at some point, but I just wasn't, it just wasn't for me. So I don't want to mark it below a five because I just think that one wasn't for me, let's say. Uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, I okay. also gave a five. Um, reason being, I thought the. Uh, animation style was pretty cool i thought the ending was actually pretty good i won't give any spoilers but i actually thought the I way they ended it yet either. Yeah. that's one i have to catch up so on. yeah if you're losing momentum in that nightmare i would say stick it out because it's only 10 right. episodes or whatever and the ending well, is I good the cow is um, cow but yeah but yeah and uh but yeah, again that was more episodic you know i don't yeah, i feel like yeah, that yeah. wasn't heading anywhere um I do feel like the so-called like emotive moments were kind of carried by the score a little bit and i also just oh, thought fantastic. I see you. that the um the animation in general. I, I don't know. I, I thought the show, in, it just wasn't that great. I thought the ending was great. Star was mm. cool, but eh, no, whatever. Just average. Here we go. The first one I give a decent score to, or actually a very good score, was Erased, which I think I've mentioned before. Oh, yeah, I do think that Erased is just very good. Excellent animation. Actually fleshes out characters, unlike most anime, I feel, which just don't really touch on that at all. I could never give it more than an eight because there's this really weird, sussy undertone that makes no sense. I won't get into, but unfortunately, they have fallen into yeah. one of the classic tropes, which uh, doesn't really vibe with me. But I do actually, that is one of the very few animes I would actually recommend someone else to watch. So there you go. This one's going to upset a lot of people. Grave of the Fireflies, I gave a five because to me, 
and by the way, this for people, this show is like uh, the movie. Sorry, is hyped into oblivion, and I just I don't understand it at all. Well, because it's a darker uh, Ghibli movie, which it, is like in terms of the overt tones of it, is really extreme for what Ghibli does. Yeah, it's to me, it's just another classic anime attempt of like horrors of war, but like there's nothing. I, I didn't find the main characters like interesting or I, I wasn't emotionally invested in them at all. I didn't care about them at all. I don't think they would develop particularly in an interesting way. They did try to do it. I just didn't think it was good. Um, and yeah, like to me, just there was nothing of interest here. Millennium Actress, which I watched very recently because Mr. Kira recommended it. Definitely one of the better ones I've seen. Really cool style, you know, uh, a really unique concept. I think, in general, like the way they approach it. As I said to Kira, it is kind of, well, I'm guessing, obviously, but it seemed like it was kind of an ode to Japanese cinema through the ages, which I've not really seen much of, so that's probably lost on me. And you'll um, have no idea who it's actually based on? Yeah, well, no, I, I had read that it's based on a sp specific actress loosely, but that didn't mean anything to me either. I, exactly. Yeah, so it's that, just a trivia, a piece of, of trivia, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I kind of got the main sort of thing. The problem is... So again, this isn't giving anything away at all. But the main theme, as far as I understand it, is like, it's about the journey, not the destination. To me, that doesn't really generally work if you don't have a super satisfying ending. And again, no spoilers, but I thought the ending was pretty dog shit. So I couldn't give it more than that. Um, My Neighbor Totoro, I gave a three. I think. No! I, I think <laughs> I think that movie is the biggest nothing burger I've ever seen. It's the character concepts are cool i love the cat bus thing obviously tutorials are, but there's no there's no story and there's nothing profound or like other than I, I guess like the innocence of children like it's not it doesn't have anything tangible to it at all it's just like I'm just learning that you don't an afk movie here, there's no subtle no, no 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 there is no subtlety in this movie no one could make a serious point about my neighbor's tutorial and say oh didn't you understand that it was a commentary on society no bullshit there was nothing there it was just an empty I, shell I've with a cat people, bus which is I've cool i've seen some people talk about how it's a commentary on children who aren't really you know raised with close parental bonds and how they develop their own independence there's some sure yeah that, but um but, i haven't um, watched it for a little no while. i mean i i agree again that to me is a complete nothing burger don't give a fuck i just thought there's nothing oh, spoiler alert nothing happens it's just not interesting uh yeah <laughs> shit uh valley of the wind i gave a seven it's basically and i again spoken to Kira about this before but the princess mononoke spoiler alert i only gave that a five is th that's there's... what that is bonkers that, that's the most no, no, no. egregious one. there's no yeah, point there's no po great. okay context valley of the wind came out before princess mononoke and if you've watched valley of the wind there is no point in watching princess mononoke and it adds nothing of any interest whatsoever again apart from a couple of cool like beast designs it's like yeah cool nice stick to graphic art i'd, I'd suggest buddy because yeah no Valley of the Wind is all you need to watch if you want, if you care about, you know, environmental themes and all those kind of things that Miyazaki cares about. Else. I don't care. It, he, it's, it's Ghibli. And Dude, I'm just going to start recommending you some really weird shit and seeing what you can hang with. At this hey, point. I'm, I'm down. <laughs> anyway, so that gets a seven. Also, just be it's just better than Princess Mononoke as well. So that, that gets a seven. Not. Mononoke is the most, one of the most overrated movies of all time. That gets a five. Uh, I actually ended up, after some back and forth, giving Psychopaths a six, because I did actually think on reflection that it is better than, for, for anime, it's certainly better better than average. And I did actually think there's loads of good stuff in this. They do just the, do the mistake of dragging it out for infinitum for no reason. But the first it half of that series is good. It would have been better if they had a payoff in the second series, but they, they didn't have that for me. I've just yeah, realized. I only watched the first season, but. Yeah. I've just realized, Rich, that you may be watching like anime for you is actually just like a waste of time because you don't actually seem to enjoy any of it that much ah so why we're coming not... we're coming we're coming to one which i did like though so you'll see it, it's, a, it's a journey mate it's a roller coaster had... <laughs> maybe it is look... about the journey not the destination look how much you've had to watch to like even find something that you've even got a true of, like, this is this yeah, is over like years <laughs> yeah this is over yeah. like years of other people's recommended age anyway psychopaths decent i would probably stop watching after episode 12 or so if i was recommending it but whatever uh steingate and uh, uh, the most egregious offender of dragging things out i actually gave steingate a six just because i thought the concept is there's so much i like about the concept and there's so many How really much, cool ideas 
No, I finished you it. Finish it. I, oh, it, okay, it, right, right. it. I'm not going to lie. It was a struggle. To, like, ri no joke. Like, so far as watching anything as a struggle, that was a struggle to finish. But right. there's loads of really cool things sprinkled in, and you have to give credit to that. And it is way more interesting conceptually than a lot of anime. So I do feel like you have to give credit to that. Now, the most recent watch, or actually, I tell a lie, a millennium whatever actress was. Um, these were in consecutive days. So there you go. Went full weeb this this past week. Your name. Now, I would say this movie clearly has loads of glaring issues but it is so visually yep. spectacular you have to just not only give it credit for that but also my interpretation at least is like that's so overwhelmingly the goal of the movie that it would be kind of disingenuous for me to be like oh but the dialogue was really stupid it's like yeah loads of the dialogue is really fucking stupid you know what could have like i get so i gave that an eight you know what the, could actually have unironically made this like a nine is if, and I'm not spoiling anything here, but there's two main characters, and the whole point of the movie is their like, lives are in parallel, right? But only one of their lives is actually fleshed out at all and has any significance to the story. If they'd somehow managed to make both of their lives like equally significant and interweave that, you could legit throw out words like masterpiece or whatever. But that doesn't happen. There is loads of really shitty dialogue. There are loads of crappy anime tropes in it. There's also this really weird thing he does where he'll just change the tonality of it, like midway through, where there's like a little montage or something with like K-pop music in the background. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So yeah, loads of things I didn't like, but trust me, just purely like, if I was going like PC nerd, like graphically, it's like fucking insane. And I read a, one comment about this movie, by the way, which I completely agree with. Is like, if you take a still at any point during this movie, it could be a postcard. And I think that's like a yeah. really good way to describe yeah. it. So oh, you should definitely watch Weathering with you then, because it's effectively the same. Yeah, it's on exactly. Yeah, story. it's on the it's on the list for those. Re Again, are you going to find anything like truly deep here or whatever? No, but I would say that the plot, even though the dialogue's kind of shit, is engaging enough that you get to experience the visual is how i put it but as i said the visual is like maxed out this is like 11 out of 10 visual and you can't right. ignore that so i do give that an eight right another one people are gonna like attack on titan four and that's generous by the I way didn't like i that didn't like is it either generous attack on I titan the, i hate i thought the main, main cast was weak i thought yep. that the pacing was weak it is in it oh, is one pacing of these flavor of the month shows it's one of them. It's one of these really annoying shows to me, and like I understand why people like it, and I do. I'm not gonna like because it, it's very energetic, and I can understand how you can get caught up caught up in it. But it is absolutely carried by its soundtrack, its animation, and the character designs. And but you can basically point to any flavor of the month anime. Like I think, well, My Hero Academia actually has some bonuses too. I'm not gonna say that's completely like that, but obviously things like Sword Art Online and a couple of the other big flavor of the month ones. It's the same formula. Great character designs, but actually quite flimsy. And even if they pose interesting questions, they never give you any depth to them. I had that same problem with Tokyo Ghoul, where it's like, here's these interesting questions. Now let's ignore them and go do something else. And that ignored me so... Yeah. Attack on Titan apparently does pay off in the long run. But basically, I had the same issue with you in terms of things dragging out. Where I'm like, I don't want to have to wait till half of three season two or into season three to get the payoff for this. Yeah. So I just didn't... I went to watch things that I actually enjoyed in the meantime, rather than... And times. all of those, all of those concepts that you're like hit hit with immediately, like the sort of medieval esque super high yeah. walls and the actual titans. That is where all four of the points come from, by the way, because that stuff's cool. The way they fight them or whatever is cool, but the show itself, I'm I'm not gonna lie, I've I've only seen part, half of the first season before I was already so bored. Yep. It's just, pacing, yeah, it's, it's I think it's just, I, th I think it's I hear garbage. it gets better when they switch the focus onto different characters. But the initial main three, I thought were You're a lighter. Very, <laughs> yeah. But it's like, mate, uh, the, you know, of all, the, of all the episodes I saw, and I'm going to say I saw like, I don't know, 12 episodes or something. Every five seconds, it's a new character just frozen on the spot going, Oh my God, war yeah. is so bad. I'm like, no shit, fucking hell. Go watch Grave of the Fireflies, buddy. Like... I'm so what bored really of this trope. What about a really intelligent uh, talk about anti-war propaganda and like bringing children and young adults into war, right? You know, is it not? Yeah, no, it's brilliant, mate. It's actually, yeah, okay. I, it's just uh, all over my head. Uh, but nah, Attack, Attack on Titan is shit. I don't care. It's fucking <laughs> shit. Uh, Death Parade, we already talked about that last time. I, I gave that a five because I think the first episode, okay, right, which was right. a standalone, is a seven and then it's like a three. So okay, I'll, I'll take the seven. Five. I'll take the seven. Yeah, we'll cut it the, there. yeah the first the episode as a standalone was good. <laughs> Don't watch beyond that. So I would actually recommend watching the first episode of that. Do Death, not Death Billiards watch, is the standalone. Yeah, do so, not watch yeah. the second one. And then the last one on the list that I've seen 
uh, Demon Slayer, which I gave a five. The reason I gave it a five is because, again, visually, really nice. But yeah, I already have a recommendation to you based on this then. Right? Okay, visually, really nice. But you might want to withdraw it depending on what you think of my next critique. Uh, it, yeah, it does that anime thing where they describe everything that's happening on screen, even though I can already see it. So, yeah, I'm kind of bored of people saying, oh, my God, he swung his sword at me and I had to duck. It's like, yeah, I watched it, mate. I literally just saw you do that and I saw him yeah. swing his sword. Well, what like, if you had to watch the previous episode, Rich? You might, have, you might have been missing that context. Well, yeah. No, when they recap it, it's even more fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's even better. So, yeah, I, I, Demon Slayer is just no and then someone said to me like oh but you have to finish watching it because then you can watch the movie and that's really good no again if there's any like prerequisite of i have to watch like a library's worth of shit to get some kind of enjoyment out of it i'm just not going to watch it same with clone wars like i don't care if it gets good in season oh, 17 it is really good in season three it does <laughs> like, I do be quiet it you be quiet i know that i struggled through that recently <laughs> no it's it's not that's a no from me i know no i got no absolutely not so yeah that is my entire anime and no i did not what bang these out in the last week that is about three and a half years worth of when i it's so my crazy toe in. to me like you've not even watched like the the really good stuff man like you've I, watched i've watched all... i've watched some good like i i don't again i don't remember things like howl's moving castle because it was so long since i watched mm. them so that's I, not even one of the good I ones i think remember. that's the worst gebler films I think that's one of the worst Ghiblis. Well, it's already better than Princess Mononoke. I know, I know that from memory. So know, it can't that, be by that. the way, can I just say on the Princess Mononoke film, when uh, what was the, the film you're describing? It's like any film could be a postcard. You, oh, no, uh, no, your, um, your name. Your name. Yeah, it's your name. Richard's just decided to, uh, he's allowed to give that one caveat points because yeah. he decided that's all, that's all visuals. Right? Yeah. That's all yeah, visuals. Yeah. Like, the story and all that. But Princess Mononoke, that can't just be all visuals. Like, for its time period, Princess Mononoke is a much better feat of visuals yeah. than that pile of garbage. Yeah, kind of. But, okay, but the, no, but the thing is, <laughs> this is where... I've got he's now got to walk No, 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 no like... this, this is the thing, though, because there are, like, okay, Spirited Away, for example, when it came out, was visually spectacular, and you literally... And the design still holds yeah, up, in fact. And you literally could not do what you did with uh, your name to Spirited Away back then, or obviously Princess Mononoke even further back. But... That, that is also kind of like being, um, I don't know, like, oh, I love this VR experience because it's so fucking immersive. And then you being like, yeah, but playing Space Invaders was immersive back in the day. It's like, yeah, but I, I'm not going to score it in the same way. Like, I agree for the time, but... Yeah, but there's... Princess Mononoke still looks unbelievable. No, it doesn't. See, that's right the now. thing. That's the thing. So I disagree a... with that. Bro, this, bro this like is... stuff like when she runs along the tiles of the Dude, house, okay? Have you and ever she's seen... so like feated, she doesn't disrupt them. Right. And then when he jumps on top. Early today, folks. When yeah, did you yeah. see right, when wow. do you think Princess Mononoke came out? When do you think that came out? 88 or something? No. Uh, it was like it was nineties? Okay. Um, so, or two thousand. Okay, so nineties or two thousand. Mate, have you ever seen a fucking Disney movie? Like, do you actually... Princess Mononoke is not special for the time. 2001. 2001. And go, ba go back Missed and watch... Toy go watch... No, go watch Toy Story 1, the Pixar animated film. It doesn't look as good yeah. as Princess Mononoke. I'll tell yeah. you that for a fact. What? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm going to throw out a random anime here. Toy Story doesn't graphics. look good anymore. So, so what I really appreciate about... Um, so there's a there's a, there's an anime I watched called Grimgar, which was very interesting because that's all in watercolor. It's actually done in water paint. Now, I wouldn't recommend it because I think it's got a couple of tropes which like... It's just a little too gamified. It's an isekai, so it's just like, whatever. But the actual the visuals are really fantastic in that regard. One thing which I would recommend to you, though, based on you liking the visuals of Demon Slayer and some stuff, stuff like that, I think you'd really enjoy Fate and Limited Blade Works. I think that the first episode of that, if you if you make it through the like the prologue of it, I think you'll really like that because it's not as explained fight scenes, except the fight scenes are fucking great. The sound design is great and the visuals are really good. It's done by the same studio that did Demon Slayer, but without the shonen kind of archetypes as much. So you might like that. Um, I'm going to cross my fingers that one. Then there's some weird shit we can recommend. Like So there's a show called Dora Hetero, which... It, you know, you can tell where, like, there's certain music in the 70s and the 80s. Like, that's definitely written while well, someone's very, very high on weed. Someone's definitely done this on some other stuff. That show is done on crack, and I fucking love it. It's fantastic. It's really, really crazy. There are a couple of things out there. I'm I, wa I want to test, like, how out there you were willing to get with some of these designs. Because you've got some pretty middle-of-the-park stuff in terms of the actual content and stuff in here right now. Wait I mean, see this, how far this, will this, this is like, you know, uh, the, the, the ultimate, see. yeah, this is like the ultimate pleb list, you know, I'm just doing like yeah. all the super mainstream stuff. But again, you know, clearly some of us haven't seen all the 
Club tier stuff because I don't think Kira has ever seen, I don't know, Pocket Hauntus or The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which came out in the fucking 90s and look way better than Princess Mononoke visually. So, I mean, mate, yes, they do. Go watch any 90s Disney movie and, yeah, no. Uh, anyway, we should... Unfortunately, pro- I, 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 I have done, done that recently and many of them do require the old rose-tinted glasses. Oh, and mate, they're not, of, good. Like, they're not good, some of them. Some of them yeah. aren't good, but, like, visu- mate, visually, some of the scenes in Hunchback are insane and yeah, Pocahontas as well uh, some of them some of the coloring you know, and stuff like that you know, is insane you, you can only see Hunchback of Notre Dame in German on stage because Alan Menken who's the person who wrote the score for it basically mandated that there must be a 200 person choir doing the Bells of Notre Dame so they can't fit it on West End or Broadway so it's only done in Germany I'm pretty sure uh, apparently it's a fantastic experience though that's hardcore cool. oh mate you just it's, reminded but, like, me the, but the soundtrack Alan Menken's fucking genius by the way so that would I would love to go see that at some point. You, you just reminded me of one of the most pain. I don't I can't remember if I've talked about this on a show before or not. But one of the most painful experiences I've ever had, which is I briefly dated someone when I lived in Berlin who was German, and when we were at their house, they were asking like what they wanted to, what we wanted to watch or whatever, and they're like, oh, I'll put on some like old school Disney, like they love Disney, right? And it was dubbed. And I was like, you don't love Disney. You're dubbed now. Dubbed. Imagine, by the way, or think of all the sort of absolute classic tracks and bangers that Disney's have put out over the years in their movies and then imagine it in German. Oh my God, that is trauma. I don't want to hear about... Any, I don't want to hear about Nymera being bullied when he was in school. Dubbed. I don't want to hear... You watch anime dubbed? Based. <laughs> based. What do you mean based? Absolutely it's based. It's a double fucking standard. Absolutely. And I embrace it fully. You yeah. stopped watching another because fun, there was no dub of it. Fun. Fun. Fun, <laughs> fun little. Just, I just can't believe I'm sitting here at the fact that he's watched like all these animes dubbed and these are his. <laughs> Mate, I, I can't. I, mate, you know what I did? I think I, I told Nymera this. There was one. Uh, of the, in I, fact, I think it was your please, name. Was like only the anime section. Turn no, it, was it, was, it was. Oh, it was another. another which no, no, didn't, no. It didn't have a dub for it. So yeah, I said, stopped oh, watching screw, that. Watch but it. then, with your name, it. it was. They, they only had the non-dub version, so I paid to watch the dub version. So there you go, and that is base. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> English is a beautiful language and German is horrible. So yeah, I embrace that double standard fully. Uh, right, hi, welcome to all the people who use the timestamps and have skipped the uh, anime section. Oh no, we have to do our would you rather first. Yeah, God, it's gonna be a long one. Right, guys, oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a quick it's a quick one this week, don't, don't worry. Right, would you rather yes. every time you Go eat on. get at least one hair in your mouth or Bite your tongue at least once. Oh, Nymera, kind of. hit me. <laughs> Whose hair is it? <laughs> eh, if... It could be anyone's, but so it's not my own hair. It could be your hair. It's you will get I a hair. <laughs> you will get a hair in your mouth at least one. Is every it time oh, you Just what throw size? this out there. Oh, it's like head hair. <laughs> Yeah, what's that? Who knows? I'm not gonna, like, randomly get a pube in my food I mean, every time. Who knows? Who know? It won't be something that's like, it, it's not something that's, you know, impossible to happen, but this has made it possible. Sorry, sorry, it's just, just you'll get again. super unlucky. You'll get every super unlucky and get eat, hair. Every time you like. No, no, no. Every time something. you eat a meal, like eat anything, you will get at least one hair in your mouth during the course so of once eating. Once per meal. meal. Yeah, exactly. And, right. and how bad does the bite? How bad does the tongue bite? Berries. It's never going to like bite your tongue off or something. It's just, you know. Like, it's really confusing if you're having soup. Do you ever, really ever, soup. A, do you ever put a hole through it? Nah, just a bite. Oh. Like you bite, bite your tongue. It's not painless, uh... but it's also not. Oh my god, I need to go to ER. You know. I mean, if it's randomly someone else's hair, that's that's pretty off-putting, actually. Let's say it's your own hair. Let's make okay, this simple. Okay, that helps more. In that case, it would look. I with hair like this. How do I bite my tongue when I'm anyway. drinking all my food through a straw? <laughs> I was about to say, it's really confusing if you're just eating soup. Yeah, like, how'd I do that? Like, um... I'm just going to go with my own hair. I've got long enough hair anyway. It's not an uncommon thing. Okay, just fair enough. That. This, is a, this, is a cruel, this is so cruel, this one. I, I'm, I'm going to have to go with hair as well, because the tongue-biting thing is just so unbelievably horrendous. <laughs> 
See, I'm going to go with tongue biting. And because, again, this question was based on a very recent trauma of mine where I got one of those tiny, a tiny, tiny little hair stuck in between my teeth. And oh, my God, it took so it was one of those where you can feel it with your tongue. But whenever you try and like reach for it or use pliers, like you just can't find it. And that motherfucker was in there for about two hours. And that was hell on. Oh, God. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm biting my tongue. Easy, easy one for me. Also, imagine that you get the hair stuck in your mouth at the start of the meal and then it's just there until you finish just living its life just sat in your mouth and you can feel it with every bite no no, no, no. definitely biting my tongue anyway we'll move swiftly on as we spent more than enough time not talking about esports let's start in the eu lcs now renamed to the lec with k corp who went crashing out again with uh you got it. Bingo card. Two and seven. Ha ha ha. So guys, very simple question. I'll start with you, Mr. Kira, on this. What went wrong? What would you do? You're just going to blow up the whole project. Does anyone get to keep their job here? Like, what do you what do you make of this debacle? I think the team's fine. He just needs, like, a player, like, Bo's, like, just not suitable to this team. Like, yeah, uh, again, it's the same thing as I said before. I don't, I actually just don't care how bad his hands are because actually having good hands is so little of, like, League of Legends jungling, like, at any given time. It's, like, crazy. Like, I, I don't actually think a lawyer has had good hands for, if we're having, like, a serious conversation about that, I don't think a lawyer's had, like, really good hands for, like, a long, long time, pe time period. And he's doing, like, Fine. Across the aggregate in Mad Lions, like, I think you go you go and grab what was making you success, successful down in Tier 2, even as, I know, Rich, you have your reservations. Don't um, say it. Go get Synchro. Oh, you griefer. What's the, what, why not? How about, first of all, because you've literally got Linkus in your academy. So oh, like, let's yeah, roll that. Go... Let's roll that dice first, please. Like... No, but I'm saying that, like, what do you call it? Like, for to bring the positive, because if you bring in Linkas, I don't know what like Linkas does, and there's no evidence of Linkas having done anything. So I would just I would rate them like I rate Mad Lions, like at the start of the year, where I don't know. Like I don't know. Oh, I don't I've know what that means. I just know. For years. Linkus, yeah. I know. He, I know he's really, really. He's hyped, a less but, okay? toxic inspired, basically. If you want to go like gameplay style, like ish. Yeah, I know. Like I've had loads of. I've watched like his games and stuff. What I'm saying is, how does that translate into KC? Like, does like Linkus just being a better player win you more games on KC? Like, if you actually break down KC's game losing sequences, right? Does Bull hitting a Q or like does someone like not like you know what I mean? Do, does that per him being like cast and those game sequences make those game sequences better well okay here's a couple of points first of all i would say that those game sequences won't happen because they just play the game completely differently i know it's a bit of a cop-out but what i would say yeah. is also like i think you've gone from one extreme to the other which is Bo, even though he's not particularly shown it at least recently is mr ha generational talent hands right and then it's like Syncroff is kind of the opposite the problem is Synchrov is so much the opposite, and I've already watched this movie in LEC. He is simply not good enough to play LEC and not be punished for it. Even though, and I'm only, you know, know this because other people have told me, but I do believe this is true. Synchrov had a huge voice in terms of how Casey was playing the game. He was a shot caller. He made smart decisions on like a macro level for Casey. But as I said, I think you've gone too far the other way where as an individual player, and I know individual strength does not matter as much as it did, you know, back in the day or whatever, he is not good enough. He will get exposed, and it's it's too far the other way. You basically want Synchrov, but better, really. But, no, I don't, but I... here's the problem. If I make... See, if I have Synchrov, and he makes Sakin and Targamas and... um. What do they call it? Uh, Cabo Shard. Cabo right? Play better. He won't, around, like a, He right, won't. He won't. No, because the problem is people. What people will start like, doing you think to Sakin was making the same mistakes in tier two as he makes in tier no, one. No, no, no. But here's the thing: the reason why it won't happen. Like you're right. If you teleport them to mid game and it's an even game state, then I completely buy what you're saying. The problem is every team will just do exactly what they did to Synchrov at the end of his group. Remember when Synchrov had that really good start? In I can't remember which team it was that he joined. I think it was his second team. Yes. Oh. He was he was playing really well at the start and then fell off a cliff. Every team started targeting the fuck out of junk of, of just counter jungling Synchrov, and he was doomed because he's shit. 
Like, yeah, and th- also, that's what mid- midliner was bad nuclear round, losing yeah, every true, single midliner matchup, no matter what was picked for. True, that is, yeah, that is true, and that is fair right, context. Have you, ever but... told, try, have you ever tried to... I remember it was on the old map, and it was on Silas patch and Akali patch, where if you couldn't win into, like, Sejuani Sejuan Silas, games would could literally be over at, like, 10 minutes. Sure. And nuclear round was literally found in the most creative way. So, like, you can pass the parcel of blame, but you're asking me to fix... Like, I can't just go and be like, oh, get Kanavi and make him the No, no, no. I, all KP. I'm saying is, I'm telling you what's going to happen. They're just going to target him, and he's going to drown. Like, it, right. I, you're, I agree with most of what you're saying. The Frisco problem is, he has to play the first 10 minutes of the game. That, that would also be the exact same argument for Friscovi. Like, Friscovi was supposed to be a mid laner in the LEC that was supposed to be able to be targeted and then drowned by Mad Lions, right? Sure. And instead, what he is, is he's just uh, not a vet, not particularly good laner, um, he's like pretty good at like team fight flanking situations and he can sometimes be a bit too passive with resources that are put into him. But he's like a fine player, right? Sure. But he's acceptable for getting to the finals of LEC in the current state of the league. There is a version of, of KC that was maybe better with like Synchrov on it than with like Bo. If you look at like what your actual like end results to try and like be. Because you have like upset as your ADC. So like having this like air, I, there's I, a I difference though we saw we saw synchro i mean what i'm saying is basically that history will repeat itself with synchro and i see no reason why it wouldn't with frescovi we had not watched that movie yet so it's us making assertions some of which we can even say are incorrect like my read on frescovi was not really good like he's doing things differently into a better level than i predicted that he would but my point is i've seen synchro and i've seen him and he's the exact same player he was before I mean, like the, the both thing time, which, I think oh, the thing which I think is pretty much like you, you can't argue this. Something in jungle support needs to change, bare yes. minimum. Because it, not to be boring, if you want to judge pretty much any team by macro, it almost always comes down to jungle support in some way. It's like the most basic way to like triage something. But like when a team is just this lost, um, you know they can they can make some some decent early game plays. But when it comes to mid game, they just don't know how to set up the map. And I think that um, you know, Bo, I've been a I, I'm, I've been a pretty big Bo apologist over this year, and I really don't think it's all his fault. Um, I do think though that this this week though he was straight running it. Yeah. Like this la- this. It looks like he doesn't care. Games. Yeah. He's a, he has, can, but he's always been a tilter. That's the thing. But I think he's I think he's a tilter. Um, in in the way that um, the, what I called him last time on the show is irresponsible, where he <laughs> has an opening, opening. Where, he, where he has like he has an opening and then he will throw everything into that opening or try and create an opening that isn't there with the with the amount of agency that he has. Like he has a certain amount that can go a certain distance and he always tries to stretch it too far. Right now, it's it yeah it, like and, and often he'll do that without the backup of his teammates. Um, I think that's really, really telling is the fact that I, I don't see this guy like comboing up with his teammates to make these individual advantages. I wonder if he's just saying, well, I'll just try and get this on my own. And if I get it, then that's great. I can give it back to the team without realizing, obviously, if you lose it, then you just have to double down into whatever. I mean, last couple of the games, you know, like the, the last Vi game he had, he was continually in 1v3s out in the middle of nowhere, even on Vi as a champion, which is pretty good at getting out of most hairy situations by able to Q backwards. He was finding himself where, like, he just uses Q cooldown to get into a position, then he doesn't have it for another four, five, six seconds or whatever, so he can't get back out. This is becoming a much more common thing for him. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I think that something needs to change in jungle support. Now, whether that is just ripping out the whole duo, and putting something else in. Maybe you do bring in someone like Linsus. I have a lot of love for Linsus. I think this, this guy's great. I watched him back on Dusty when he was NLC champ and he did well in Amir Masters from there. He's a very versatile player and, you know, he was a big Hecarim Jarvan player. He also played carries like Graves and stuff like that too. He's a big player of everything, really. Um, I think he deserves LEC at some point. Whether it's here and now, that's a different question. Also, I think that Kamato said they are making changes in pretty much immediately that they well he said not immediately but within the short term but it's what changes they can make now i'd imagine that means that contractually or financially there are things that they need to adhere to which presumably that is the case um because they're just checking the date on fucking Callis passport to see if he's 18 yeah that's what they're waiting for but like Callis linkas like like, Callis linkas because they've got them on like academy as like the obvious like gun to head like just well, change I, don't even, I, I think it's like even if you didn't have guns ahead i would still be suggesting players like that i wouldn't be unhappy to see them in in, in lec no i think linsus he was 
he was looked at by a couple of teams this last off season anyway. I'm trying to even yeah. remember if he was looked at the year before that as well. Yeah, actually. a few splits, a, a, at least There's, three splits worth. I think at he least. was looked at by Vitality when they were looking at Douglas as well. I think that was one of the cases. I'm trying to remember if Heretics before they signed Yankos because remember Yankos was really like umming and ahhing about joining yeah. Heretics in the first place. Yes. Pretty much all all of the big jungle moves have considered Linsis as part of it because this guy has been so good for me. Yeah. number of number of years now um so like i think that would be absolutely fine to bring him up and let's be honest i mean we kind of said the coaching change all it potentially is going to be is change for the sake of change like you're gonna need to do that on a bigger level now i think because i think these players are just not going to work together i think at this point we've seen that uh, the communication is not there i don't think that the mood is there because i think that you know when the pressure was off in winter they played fine. I think as soon as the pressure is on, this group of players is not functioning. So you need to change whatever the core of that is. Now, obviously on the outside looking in, very hard to tell that. Um, but in, on a macro level, I think just changing the people who have the most agency in terms of early and mid game macro in terms of jungle support, you need to do one, you need to change that. Whether that's completely hold both of them or one or the other, you, you need to do that. I think Targumus has not been as shit as, win, as, as Winter. I think he's been better. Um, no, this you know, week we was really bad again though yeah, like he yeah, yeah. went but, back but on the whole yeah so, he, then, he know, was I, better I, went from I, I a, a one to a three yeah i i put out i put out a tweet like um earlier the, you know just after they were uh, releg uh, not relegated after they um after they were um, knocked out of playoffs contention it was like legitimately based on stage games who do you even keep at this point it looks yeah, like exactly that's so, my it point looks it looks yeah. like everyone's just done you know yeah. everyone just looks like they're mentally not there i mean Oh, I think actually based off of spring, not winter, but spring, maybe maybe you keep Kabashad. He had some okay laning performances and his champion pool's not bad. Is Olaf, you know, okay in an early game on stuff like the Rumble um, and, and Olaf, he's been all right. But that's about as close as it gets. I don't, I'm not even saying you keep Kabashad at this point, but obviously midway through a year, in your first year in the LEC as an organization, you know, that has a lot of like pressure on it and also would like to have French representation to kind of appease their fan base as well and kind of keep that branding on there and camaraderie. Now, how many changes can you realistically make to this? I don't think we're going to see a full five roster change. Like, no. you, I, I think financially that would be absolutely disaster for the team. Um, so I think you probably have to keep Cabo. Outside of that, like... It, I think Saken's still got the same issues. Again, he sits there with resources and he does nothing with them. He is just anti-clutch. He will he will exist, but he will not make the big plays. He will sit there and never pull the trigger. I'm very very passive in terms of his impact on the game. I think that jungle so, but support here's is the, completely out of the why picture. Does, I think right, why does why does not ready right that, now? But the, 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 the thing is, people never spoke about Saken, right? This way, at like tier two, when he played with like Syncroft and stuff like that. So uh, rather than in trying to improve like two people and then just still have the exact same problems within the team, this is why I was rank recommending Syncroft, even though oh, it, as bad the, as they may be, because masters kind of synergy. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, at the end of the day, we that that is a team we have like seen and we've seen it be successful even at tier two, right? Okay, and. You're at least keeping like a a, a components of that like success and that ability to like problem solve as they've done as a team to be successful to win tier two. However, what what the thing is is like good players, um, don't when you just put them into teams, don't always just make teams like better. We've known this in League of Legends for like a thousand years, yet we all just keep on pretending over and over and over again. Unless you are literal godlike, like literal fucking unbelievable S tier tier, like Canyon, Chove, Knight, where like you could replace anyone and you're you're so game changingly OP. Majority of the time, skill and league isn't actually as big a factor as what people make into sure. and like synergy and how you make a team environment can be more important and because i don't have insights into those i can only just say well everyone on kc is pretty fucking terrible and probably at some point justifies not having a job but that isn't like a really realistic like outcome to like make for the five people here's the thing like, though I, here's the thing go. so i i completely agree with your holistic point like especially now team play is way more important than individual skill assuming you have some kind of skill right the yes. issue i have is that i see you know you see people people like veteran or whatever who get memed because they put cabochard as like an s plus tier player or whatever and all this shit or whatever like the problem is this this pivot this perpetual pivot will always happen where people like that will always just say like and i saw him put out something today saying like oh the problem is they identified you need to keep players together but they kept the wrong ones together they should have put i guarantee you and i know this guy so well 
if Sinkov had gone up and Targamas hadn't, he'd have said the exact same thing about Targamas. He like this was never going to work because Targamas wasn't there. I'm not and trying to like. How many times can you do that as well? Yeah, and matching until you really no, exactly. Like, I'm not. I'm not trying to like call him out specifically, or whatever. But this is like a thing that people I, talk about all I the time, agree, where it's like just promote the whole plug and play. Yeah, and it's the only thing you can do. It's like you promote the whole fucking team, and then then you prove to yourself, okay, they're all just shit. Like I just I have not seen enough from Saken or Cabochard or Targmas or any of them to suggest that putting in a bad mechanical player who admittedly is good at pulling the puppet strings, right, will magically make these players good. Just because... And by the way, people wreck on K-Corp in, in Tier 2 as well. They won EU oh, they Masters, yes. Fantastic. They, they won EU Masters, but they were not good for large swaths of yeah. oh, that they, season. They grew through the event. Yeah, yeah they, sure. They, they, the Reckless but roster it, like, started in play and then grew to win. Yeah, but they, they were not, like, good for the whole year in LFL or anything. They were, like, massively yeah, no. underperforming for, like, chunks of that. So I, I, I don't think... If you take all of their performances at Tier 2 and think that that team would do anything in, L, uh, in LEC, I hard disagree. I do but, not think that's an LEC-level team. And just putting the weakest mechanical player of all of them back in the team and hoping that will turn it around. Again, I take everything that you said about that not being as important as team play. No, it, they'll be... I don't want to say even worse, but that they will not improve, in my opinion. They'll be no, bad they in a have... different way. Aye, but that's all I have to say. As the problem is that if you have these players, you could put Synchrov in, and the team record could be like the same, maybe even worse, because they would lose in like different ways. Okay, yeah. but the problem is, is what position are they right now, Rich? Yeah. So tenth. If if you're making check, yeah. The, the... Well, if you, if you were to flip it, they should have flipped it this season. Like, sure. as yeah, in, yeah, like, yeah. this split. You know this, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. this split, like, yes. th this was a split to do it. Yes. Because, and, but the, the yes, whole idea is they tried Definitely. to do, like, they tried to do coaching staff, like, change, okay? And see if, like, that, like, fixed it. Like, the random, like, oh, we can't, the players are expensive to get rid of. Let's f uh, flip it on coaching staff, which is, in a financial way, um, from an outsider's perspective, it makes sense. However, like, you have now went double tenth and you've kind of got, like, nowhere to go except from, like, the, the the theoretical changes that they're, like, they're thinking of of getting like and because here's the thing I'll propose to you if Linkus and they, they support the jungle and support okay and they come into the team right and they get tenth again right and they lose I, I don't know I'm not gonna phantom create like waves to lose again right whose fault is it then yeah I mean this is this is the thing though but this is also why again this is not a realistic take but obviously if it's like and I'm not I'm not going to go crazy and say import, blah, whatever. But I believe they should replace every single player on the team. I don't think there's a single player who has justified or shown anything like enough to be like, I deserve another chance or another split. I don't think any of them have yeah. done that. If you if you do keep one or two and you, and you, in bringing the other players in, you can kind of connect some dots. I wouldn't lose my mind and go crazy. But if you take each player on an individual basis, none of them should be in the team next split. They will be, of course, because apart from anything else, financially, the way German mm. labor law works, like you can't replace them all, right? Um, but I then, just if we're being realistic now, because it's such an easy swap to make because it won't cost them anything, I would promote Linkas. That seems like the no-brainer to me. And then I would have to look more closely at some of the... I mean, they've still got playoffs to go in, in LFL, so I would probably look very closely at what's happening there and seeing if I could tweak anything there before getting my checkbook but, out. Yeah. Um, you also, particularly because it's common core in LFL and as, as well, you don't necessarily want to tank their LFL sure, yeah. like stuff either, if it's all possible. I mean, I understand not doing it between winter and spring, because, especially in terms of promoting people from ERLs. That tanked, you know, um, JDXL when they were in NLC. It yeah. tanked, like, the Fnatic Rising squad when they had to take Bean internationally as well. It'll sink well here, players. though, because EU Mar the end of EU Masters yeah, will Yeah, so this sink will be here, fine yeah. now. This will be fine now. But, yeah, I mean, um, I, just revisiting what some of you guys said as well in regards to, um, you know, it should have happened this split. Completely agree. That's why I looked at that coaching saying change, and I'm like, this is change for the sake of change. Yeah. I don't think this is significant enough to root out the problem here. And, yeah, you know what? I wouldn't have minded if Syncroft have come up for this split. Because if it, you know, there are there are definitely some cases where good players can end up being worse for a team, just as just as Kira yep. said, because just something isn't right. You know, there's never going to be there's never going to be a player which will improve like every single team that they're on outside of a select few couple. And yeah, I think that um, you know you look at how, how we you know we had a good laugh at this after winter basically because uh, Mad Koi ended up doing the whole ERL to LEC synergy, keeping those players together um, better than Carmen Core did, which is like. 
a really you know it's a stick in the craw really because they you know they kept together and it's super alvaro and then you know you bring up mirwin as well and you think okay well the, and, and obviously frescovi who was on lobster riders alongside the bot side as well but, you know you're keeping the erl synergies together sk already did that with x kicks and dos they decided not to have treats he's a much more veteran player and very well regarded um and that worked out well for them on the whole as well um kami have not managed to do that with the players they brought up now if they'd kept the whole team together i would be like well yeah, I feel like they probably would have, like, mechanical deficiencies, but there is a chance that they can at least keep the synergy together um, and keep some camaraderie together, because I think this team has... I think we've basically seen, like, they have mental booms, um, and it's very, very obvious from winter in regards to week one, week two, and then suddenly they're out, and then they go into the last couple of games, and they play much, much better. It was, like, night and day difference. The problem is now, if you make big changes now for summer... Um, it's just a really difficult spot to do it in because you have no extra information to work off of because it's two 10th place finishes in a row with multiple players, uh, well, with basically, well, with the same rosters. You don't have any information to work on there. Financially and contractually, there might be issues there as well. Um, while you could move things up from between um, Kami Core Blue in the LFL and then Kami Core in, in the LEC, that could change some things. You're looking for significant changes and changing between like your ERL team and the main team is unlikely to bring about concrete enough changes that it will actually satisfy the two 10th place results in a row so you're left with literally just scorched earth get rid of everything and bring in new players but again that's very very difficult to do they they've really tied their hands behind their back by not making many big changes coming into spring i think i think they were hoping it would be a silver bullet of you know changing the atmosphere with a different coaching change obviously that's not happened it looks like they have a lot of the same kind of issues and you're left in a situation now where they've kind of wait they've waited and watched and they haven't done enough to really soothe kind of that um soothe the issues at hand yeah the lot the last thing i would just say on this because i think even people who and i would include myself in this who watched like a shit ton of the erls last year if you'd ask and obviously that's coming off a high they win eu masters and then a lot of people like to think like oh if you put this team in uh lec they did like even if you'd ask me just then after they win eum or most people i think after they won eum let's just say you put this team in LEC, how well do you think they do? I think almost everyone would probably say not very well. So I don't think like this idea of, um, you know, a fan said like, oh, they should have kept the whole team together. Like, no, I don't think, so. I, they, I still think they'd have been 10th. Like, I, I still think they would not have been very good. Maybe they'd have been a bit better than this team. Maybe they wouldn't. But yeah, I think either way, like any version, and that was, by the way, that was my big criticism if we look back and why I had them ninth place overall was because I didn't think they'd made enough changes from that team uh, that had won EUM. And I felt that basically the only guy who was actually like LEC ready was the guy who wasn't old enough to play. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm not, I am hashtag not surprised. Um, right, let's talk. Can I, can I just yeah, ask yeah. one quick question? Yeah. Cause I think it's actually an interesting talking point. How many, like, how many people do you think in the LEC are actually not mechanically in unproficient enough to be playing in the LEC and how many games do you actually find they lost their teams because of it? In terms of like, is a player so bad they've lost their games on a mechanical level? Yeah, like, and, and who, who do you think is a candidate for it like right now? Yeah, well, this is this is actually what I think is one of the the damning points about this Carmen Core roster is that I actually think mechanically the LEC is not a good level right now. So right now I feel like actually mechanically it's not that often which, hap uh, which that happens. I will say, I keep going back to the winter result between Kami and Core and Mad Koi, where Targumus like fucks up some stuff early in lane, and Kamishar particularly fucks up in the Jax versus the Kali matchup in top lane as well. And on individual levels, they just get blown out, and it's individual mistakes in laning phase through to like individual matchups later, where that kind of goes apart. Saken lost some individual games versus Humanoid, particularly um, on the Corky versus Akali in uh, in winter. Yeah, I know they I know they lost the lane. Do you think a lot of them were like like me like, mechan like mechanical? That's what I'm saying. Like well, humanoid, I think, I think Saken has at some humanoid point, lost a game against Mad Lions because he got hit with four consecutive yeah. Ari charms. But I wouldn't yeah. say humanoid's mechanical deficiencies, but he did lose Fnatic a game well, because I, I of think, it. I think I look through the all of the Carmine Core games and I'm like, particularly for consistently, more parents, I think that consistently there is at least okay. one player on the team doing it because I think Cavalier right, okay, has a lot of bad, bad things there. I think Targamus, we really tore into yeah. him for his laning phase of points in winter. I think Saken, you know, against Rogue, he was down like six thousand gold individually against Larson because he just misplayed lane phase into everything he was was he on was he on he was a carly into corky in that one too so we lost corky into a carly against um humanoid lost 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 
um, um, Akali into uh, Corky against Larson. Lost both sides of that. I can't think of as many specific examples from, from Spring. I can't remember in terms of the individual level. But yeah, it has been a consistent thing that I don't think it necessarily is every player making it. But even then, you know, Saken had pretty awful Nico game. Was that against was that against Rogue? The one where he had like a load of the whiffed ults as well? He had one like that too. I think for Carmen Court, I would actually say, yes, it has been a lot of times now where actually mechanically things have gone wrong. Particularly, I would say, from uh Saken when he actually has tried to make the big plays then you've got Cal uh, Cabochard um up until recently in spring I think Cabochard's actually fixed that more or less and then obviously Targum's more on winter as well spring has been a bit better but the overview of all of this is that I think that the mid lane talent pool right now is not fantastic I think that most of the time I think mechanically Europe might be at the weakest it's been in in a long time and yet we're still seeing individual leads get blown out to this kind of level which are the lost games particularly in winter more than spring but yes that was a, that was the case for me yeah i wouldn't be able to remember game like specific games in terms of if the game was won or no, lost just, or not but like i can who think you got a feel for who, but like who you got i mean for, like. again these wouldn't necessarily be all repeat offenders but obviously that alvaro uh rakan game was oh, like yeah horrendous um mechanically i think daglas has been responsible for some pretty horrible mechanical performances but i think they won some of those games actually um right. i think zoli's as well has had a couple of horrendous Marking mechanical performances um and i would all uh, even shio has like fucked up quite a lot mechanically actually this year um but yeah, again, I couldn't tell you like, oh, and then that led to a loss because I, I wouldn't be able to remember, like connect the dots in my head of like which of those bad mechanical performances were wins and losses. So I'm not really... Peach as no, well, no. of course, has had a couple. No, um, I, I, was, I, I was just I was just, just curious for like like what like the feel and sentiment for it for others because my personal like feel is, is like you can actually basically go through the league and you basically t draw a hat of good players and bad players mechanically losing almost the same amount of games for their teams. Because of their mechanics, yeah. as in like, like, like Razork done it, Humanoid done it, yeah, like Caps has done it, yeah. Broken Blade done it, Hansama done it, yeah, it's a case of like, done it. Not just one play. It's just like actually, can you make a trend out of this? And this is gonna is this gonna be a continuing issue? I think for Carmen Core, so, you can. I think make if, you, if you think there's players. one for Carmen Core, that's fair. I was just curious what your opinion was. I I, I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the only the only thing with Carmine Gore is that they've definitely all had mechan mechanical plenty of mechanical hiccups, but it's usually not been the biggest reason. Like it's an, <laughs> an additive reason. So yeah. Anyway, we've talked enough about that stealing seeming pile of French manure. Uh, let's talk about playoffs, which obviously start this week. Um, right, Vitality versus SK. Uh, in some ways, the least interesting matchup, in my opinion, really? maybe the most interesting matchup. Yeah. The, the, to me, this is like so many unknowns and so many different. Like any, this is the one where I look at and say no result would surprise me. Three zero vitality, three zero SK, three to any. Like take your pick. Like not these teams, I find very strange. I do not do really. Do you put much into current form, Rich? Do you put much stock into like the last seen form? uh what like you're only as good as your last game kind of thing no no not like just like what you are you asking me if i think team? giant x are gonna win the league is that what we're saying yeah. no uh, i mean as in like but with the call because for me like vitality are the like are the rising sun and sk look like the setting sun in terms of like form going into playoffs but if you look at the totality of the play like the regular season i would actually say what like sk gaming does when they win and it looks yes. good looks yeah. more replicable yes, than absolutely that. so like i'm just curious where these are at i, fa I, I favor sk in this matchup for a, a few reasons one i think over the course of a series i trust um well over a course of a series where they're not against a juggernaut i really trust irrelevant i really trust niski um, that's where the, the caveat is because I do not trust Niski when it's, you know, sort of more um, underdoggy type situations, generally speaking. Um, and I, as you say, I think the way SK won games, I mean, they, they are the owner, in my opinion, of the cleanest win this split. Um, and they did it in a very playing to their strengths kind of way, which I think is a very good sign for them. So yeah, I actually do favor SK in this matchup. I find Vitality to probably be like the weirdest team in the league, uh, if that makes sense. Like, I don't really know. <laughs> the, th the problem is, Hillisang, like this split, this split, not this year, this split, Hillisang has been kind of Jekyll and Hyde. He's had some legitimately good games. 
He's also had some more legitimately fucking horrible games. I mean, see the um, Vic coaching staff coming out with that like statement about yeah, the key, the space yeah. creation, right? Okay, one of my friends, I played three games with him, right? He went four and sixty, right? <laughs> I, I wanted to create a space in his fucking head and put brain cancer there, like that's what I wanted to do with him. I, I would not have fucking described anything that he was doing in those games as space creation. You know, right? okay, you know so what? Stop hitting me yeah. with the absolute bullshit fucking cope, right? Of like, oh, he's making so much space on the map. Yeah, and how much gold did that cost? Oh, an infinity edge worth of gold. Yeah. Decade. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's making a lot of space because he's by the fucking tier two while his team's in base or something. Like, brilliant. Yeah, look at that. Look how wide he can fucking put his hands. But yeah, no, I, the, I thought it was... And by the way, I felt a bit bad for him because I thought it was a sucky position to be put in. But when Pad did PGL, it was off the back of Hilly playing a good game. And he was kind of put in the position of, obviously, you know, having to defend him. But what he ended up saying was absolute fucking drivel. Waffle. It was yeah. basically like, and it was a really, wa as I said, I feel bad for him. I don't blame him. It was a really stupid, weighted question, which was like, what do you say to all those people who think that Hillisang's rubbish, basically? Like, what the hell is he meant to say to that? Obviously, he's going to have to talk to his strengths. Stand tall. He's got to stand his... tall Yeah, of course. And he, as yeah. he should. He, he needs to you know represent I, I will Hillisang, say but... when, if, if, if it wasn't in esports in our game that question is like I mean even in this I think it's actually pretty fair game asking that question because it's a talking point which people want to hear about it's just not one that you never gonna get but you just know what you know what answer you're gonna get though so it's yeah. a, that's it's, why it's, it's a bad extent, question but it's, it's but it's to an extent but also it's an important one to at least get something on the record for and keep it in the viewers eyes as well it's just like it's just not something that we get that much in esports I think like Hard-hitting questions don't land well, particularly in... Well, not in League of Legends. They do in other games. It's not really in League of Legends. It reminds me of when... Um, there was a question asked to Yankos about, like, well, how does it feel about being, you know, X, Y, Z? And, like, he ended up, like, kind of bristling at that as well. Back on... Back last year, actually, I think it was in spring. Like, um, it, it, it is a hard thing to do with Hillisang because, you know, at the end of the day... The the answer which you expect is it, it is the PR answer you expect in regards to like well you know I mean yes he has some stupid deaths but we stand behind him in the way that he sees the game and what he can bring to it and we're hoping that X Y Z that as a coach and as a teammate that's what you should be saying yeah. really yeah I mean it, the the correct answer is basically to say like this guy can be on a completely different page to us and we need to better manage you know when we go when we join the in to when it's so in that we don't join the in the like. Thing is, like, I, I feel like um, Hillisang has now basically been the smokescreen for a lot of very flippy people on the rest of the team, too. Because I'm just looking, uh, again, back through... Because um, we saw SK versus Vitality in winter as well, first round of playoffs as well. And I was trying to remember, okay, well, SK went into that series on ahead of Steam, even though they kind of went down towards the end of the split. We're thinking, well, it's Vitality, what's going to happen there? VTO ended up having a really good read on the mid matter of the series and just blowing that away. VTO has continued to be a very flippy player in himself. You know, I could see this result being really one-sided again if VTO um, has been playing a load of Luden's Ariana in the last week, particularly into Ari, which I think is really powerful because um, I think we've kind of seen a lot of it. I really hate when blind pick metas just go unpunished for so long. We're seeing it in the LPL right now with Renekton blind picked off and we finally saw a Quinn into it. I'm like, oh my god, where's, where's all this shit been for so long? With Ari blind pick, people are realizing, wait, hang on, if I just play a mage that can chunk you out with a QW or whatever from Ariana, can't you just not play the game? BTO's discovered that. He had some really cool tech as well in regards to, um, you put three points in your Q early for just ball mobility and a bit of wave clear, but then you max W, so you do three points Q into W, and it means that even though your combo in terms of the mobility of moving the ball is up less often, when you hit the QW, it hits like a fucking truck, and when you have the Ludens, effectively Ari goes to half health in the first trade. I mean, he did that versus Caps, he did that versus... Did you do that versus Saken as well, I'm trying to remember? He did it versus a couple of teams this week. And, like, he seems to be quite ahead in terms of the mid-meta that way. I am scared of Vitality when VTO feels like he understands how to... And he actually does know how to play his way in the current meta, where he can actually just get a single lane match where actually, you know, he's not a laning specialist, but if he has a matchup that he understands, and, like, we have Niski, you know, defaulting to stuff like, um, like the Ari or, or whatever, and he gets countered by that, I actually think that SK could be really rocked, because I don't think SK are very good at adapting to anything. If they, I think both these teams, if they get to sit within their comfort zone, are very interesting teams to watch, because I think SK, um... You know, they're, they're really kind of fun when it comes to, like, just everything's on script, you know? I, I played through Halo Combat Evolved again over the last week or two, and I was just loving just how everything was so smooth. It's a fantastic narrative, single-player experience. You have the Warthog running at the end, fantastic ending to it. That's the clean game that you have from SK. 
everything afterwards is like all the fucking later games, which then are like go off the cliff when 343 took over it. Because this team just does not know how to stick to the script. They are throwing themselves single-handedly off the script. I think Vitality have got a really good angle into this series because I feel like at least they can somewhat adapt better to changing game states than SK. And I don't even think Vitality are particularly good at that. By the way, <laughs> if anyone gets bored, then I recommend uh, checking out VTO solo queue games because yes. those are pretty interesting. Oh. Um, Whatever, mate. Solo queue is such like a non like even people are running. Yeah. But have you ever like Showmaker, one of the greatest mids of all time, had a mental break on solo queue every other like week? Like, bro, Rook, rookie had like a ha, literally had a list of people. Rookie goat candidate had a list of people he'll int if he sees them, and then he'll pay like the <laughs> play. Really? Like, like, yeah, bro, him and Doinby and Tian can't be in the same solo queue with each other because they all just, like, run it down simultaneously into each other and type, like, the most insane verbal abuse. So, hey, I'm, come on. I, I'm, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, if you want to be entertained, yeah. then watch BTO solo queue or, you know, Santorin stream. So, Rip, yeah. it finally arrived. Photon was good once again for an entire consecutive regular split. Uh, we are here. We have arrived. The Photon that was promised of... If, you know, VTO, Photon and Karza can be good at the same time, they might actually have the best backline in Europe. And I think we've seen some of that, or I can contest at least, at least all, I mean, everyone else's. It's not G2s, else's. but yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do they call it? Well, G2's got an extra man in Yikes, so it's hardly fair. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I, I I don't know where Vitality go with the, the Douglas equation of him playing carries and not playing carries. He looks so much worse, by the way on non-carries. Yes. It's it's kind of crazy. And really, when I look at this team, you want like a, basically a bridge player that's going to bring Photon and Karzy into the game and get v through some of his questionable laning. And Douglas hasn't really been that. And that's not to say that Douglas couldn't be great somewhere else as a dedicated carry player. But on Vit, I think Vit, when they like peak out, are a better team than SK, in SK Gaming. The problem is, is their disparaging parts don't come together as well this is a great point by the way just very quickly like this no, no, is what we, what we talked about before like I, I still think gming and vitality like the most guilty of this of any team ever but so much gming is just making individualistic decisions about players and that they, they'll they had this mindset of like Let's bring Douglas up because, you know, we can be seen as not just throwing money at it. And, you know, obviously this is my more cynical version. But let's, so let's bring him up and it's like a young rookie, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, wonderful if it wasn't the polar opposite jungle to what this team needs. When you've got Photon, VTO and Kazi, you do not want a carry jungler, really, like in an ideal spot. You want someone who can play the, the facilitative champions, which bring those guys online that's what you want from your jungler like he is wrong man wrong place in this team like completely yeah. in my opinion um and again and then you've got like hilly and a lot of people subscribe lots of pro players as well to the idea that you need a psychopath on your team whatever again when you've got so much carry power sitting there i actually really don't need hillisang to like be in be on it's, this it's, team like at all i really just, don't i need reliable so engage is what i need safe yeah. reliable engage it's not even so much like the the like a, a question of like firepower because firepower tends to be more in the context of like compositions right sure, now. Yeah, yeah. But like it's the ease ability of like for of like where what where vitality can like execute like from. So, you know, you've got like you have like Karzy. You don't actually have to do that much for Karzy. like Karzy's not like a greedy player in draft. He's not like a an insanely like he needs to have like early laning leads. Like right now in the current state of ADC, Cards is a more flexible and more consistent player than Han Sama. And that's probably, like, in this second phase, uh, second split, has probably probably been that for the entire like, period. You've got to remember, they basically came joint first with, like, Fnatic. Like, uh, uh, the head-to-head -head put some yeah, second, yeah. I believe. So, the, you know, six and three, a lot of their games, like, played it really well. Like, Mad Lions managed to win a split by just, like, consistently getting Cards to, like, mid-game with like either small gold leads or small gold deficits and i think there's it's not actually that hard too demanding for them to consistently do this my only big concern is is how sounds like an experienced player uh, but the like the pockets that he like plays 
when they set up for objectives, they don't set up well for like their backline and their carries. Like it's, a lot of their fights are really, really like chaotic. Yeah. And they're like kind of like tempo based. Like they'll take fights based on like numbers showing on like screen. It seems to me and stuff like that, where they've not done like all their due gel- diligence. And sometimes they just get lucky and there isn't a flanker. Um, or like Halley's like is the flanker by process of an el- elimination, you know someone can't be there, which is more positive, but he has just, like, face-checked three bushes, so... I don't know. I, I think it'll be, like, a really, in- like, interesting, like, series. To, like, give me, give me, your, like give me your prediction, Kira. I'm gonna need you to put you on the spot. What do you think this one's gonna I think, be? I think Vitality will win 2-1. I don't think there's any world in which this... See, I'd be really surprised if either team, either team two zeros. Um, I had a complete brain fart by the way earlier and thought this was the best of five for some reason. But yeah, sorry, go. On. That is a best of three, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah, best of, yeah. it's best of three. So I, I, I'm thinking this is this is most like that, like a, a two one. I think the for, like the form of the players like going in. I, I've not been so convinced as like with like Isma, and I feel like any time like. Exakit could be like ahead in like certain games. I think there's like a big enough possibility that like he like gets caught out in midwave, that like Vitality c- can like even win games are like behind in with a much bigger swing swing back. Even though I think Vitality is maybe a more mm. discoherent team. What do you think, Nymera? So I guess we haven't spoken as much about SK on the other side of this. I'm really worried about how Nesky is playing. Nesky is not playing well right now. Garbage. He's, part- he's um you know I think that Nesky. Um, week one, and then most of winter as well, he was their best player for a lot of it. I think that Niski's really struggling. I think that he is, you know, if I was talking about Bo being irresponsible, Niski's the king of this yeah. right now. He's making one big yeah, blunder pretty much in yeah. every late game. Um, you know, against Carmen Core, flashing over the wall, around Raps up and just dying. Um, that's not the only time that's happened. Um, I've loved his early and mid games on stuff like that. One the might say well. he's anti clutch Nymir a little bit. <laughs> oh no, that's actually like I would say that's actually <laughs> actively choking the thing. Is when he's actually, so for me, like the anti clutch thing is like not making the plays when you have the chance to. See. Choking for me is you make the plays and completely flub it, and I think Niski is doing that. You know, on the on the Ari game where I felt like actually had a really good early game, he, then his team fighting was was really quite poor. I think the SK that understanding a team fight right now is not fantastic. I don't think Vitality's is great either, but I think no. SK is really egregious in the way that they approach team fights. Can they that, punish them though? S- think, is SK the well, team to punish them? Well, I think right now if Vito understands his mid-meta and he's being able to force Ariana in the build that he's doing, I think that's a big problem. Um, and particularly if you're like you're over-engaging the way that I mean, if you look at the mid, uh, no, the jungle support combos that they're playing, stuff like the the Rel Camille, the Rel Rakan, and stuff like that, very long-range engage. But if you go straight into an Ariana, dead. Um, you know, and this is basically what happened in. The time they met in in winter playoffs, I'm pretty sure Vito just locked in Yone and just punished them for overdiving and, and caught them out. Um, How does this work with Azir Nymir actually? Oh shit! If it's fourteen yeah. six, then Azir's yeah. back. Yeah, Azir's back. Things. Oh, that's oh. actually worth thinking about because then actually maybe yeah. Well, because then Vito doesn't play as much as Azir, but Nesky no, plays more. It. I mean, I still think that Oriana beats Azir actually in lane, so I don't. I don't. Think yeah, so it beats the Ari and the Azir. That's even that actually puts like Ori as like a, a bannable offense. For, on, for, like, for Vito specifically, because yeah. he's finding so much comfort on it, and I feel like Vito has. I mean, when you think of like when he was playing towards the mid lane Kaiser and stuff like that, Vito just has his own like mid lane meta which he's comfortable on. But if he plays towards that, he's very valuable. He's always been one of those like very unique players in that way. It's like if you can enable his play style, he's very strong. I think other things to consider as well. Irrelevant had a frankly like embarrassing game by his standards to end out the split as yeah. well. He was on the Xanta game, which was what, the worst individual game I've seen from Irrelevant ever in the LEC. It was it was really quite quite poor. Which it you know, happens. We, you know, at the end of the day, Irrelevant is a player which I have a great amount of respect for. That game was not it. So yeah, the based on how things are coming through, I mean, there's not a huge break for SK to sort out their issues, um, which I think. You know, they've looked good when they've had breaks and they can come into the split. I don't think they've been good at dealing with, like, the rolling pressure of the split. Vitality on the other side have built through winter, and they're starting to build through spring a little bit as well. Um, Why does Isma look worse, Naimira? Uh, I, well, I think partly, yeah. So, and Isma looks really quite poor, even when he has the winning lanes, because his aggressive angles aren't, uh, aren't really working right now. I feel like SK enter splits with a good idea of how they want to play the game, but they're not updating it when other people find way, facets of their style and they realize like the, the easy tricks which they're doing in regards to, like the first clear camp on top center, immediate invade or whatever, stuff like that. Um, I feel like they're not updating their game knowledge particularly well compared to other teams. This was actually apparent 
when Marcoon was on the roster as well. So this isn't even the case of like Isma just being with this two. You know, SK really fell off last year in summer when they they did start off pretty well. Um, so yeah, as what this all kind of boils down to is, I'm I'm feeling like it's a two of vitality again in the first round of playoffs. As long as as long as like VTO understands his his mid lane meta well and Niski is on his current form. But vitality has Halasang on it and Douglas. Yeah. I'm going. There's not, there's not a game in there's not a game in there, Nymira, in two games. I don't think right now. I think I think the pressure's on. I think Kazi and Hilly have done well in pressure scenarios as well. I'm not going to put that past them. Um, I think that they grow with Old bigger man. games. I think even after this split, where Hilly Saints had a lot of very questionable deaths, I I I think that I think that actually Vito Niski is a bigger matchup because Niski, if he's put behind and he's on bad form as well, I think that doubles down in terms of how SK play the game because they need Niski to be like a whole like standard bearer for the team to structure the game around, and they're not going to have that. I don't think if Vito's on form. 2-1 SK, I'm going to say. I think SK what, got this. What makes you think that, Rich? What, what's what's giving, what's making it... What's, why are you vibe-checking Vitality? And... I, I, I think... This is going to sound a little bit harsh. I think that Vitality's record is slightly fraudulent. I do, okay. not, I do not trust Daglas at all in series play uh, for the reasons we've kind of already outlined. I, I do think he can be good on carries. I think... He's actually been pretty disastrous. And now, based on what we are talking about earlier, actually, I think he is one of the ones where he's had, like, really bad individual performances, but they've still won games. Um, obviously, I'm not saying SK is, like, this behemoth that will, you know, check every mistake that you make and punish it in a completely optimum way. But I am making this prediction also based on an assumption that Niski will... By the way, for people that forget... Niski for like the first half of regular season was absolute money. He was playing so well. And I know that this is kind yep. of like a Niskiism, if you like, that he often is like an MVP candidate and then tails up. But usually that's like he plays well up until the series they get eliminated in. And that's when he's like gets checked by Humanoid or Larson or Caps or something, right? That's usually what happens to Niski. Um, I think that Niski will have his shit together. I also trust Irrelevant much more in series play. I also think that, as we've said before, like the way SK do win games when they win games is more replicable than Vitality. I, I see Vitality as quite a disjointed team who is getting wins primarily through um, VTO landing on heads quite a bit and Photon playing really well. I think those are two things that have happened quite a lot this split, but I don't trust them as a team. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm going for the what I guess would be the upset on this one. I, I actually like S I shouldn't say like SK here in this spot. I don't like either team in this spot, but I'm going SK two one. Um, right, let's talk about Fnatic versus Europe's uh, Genji because Giant X looked like fucking Genji in that last game. Outside of that two v two which Patrick absolutely sprinted in the Lord Nautilus matchup. That game was beautiful, by the way. Like, I know we rag on, like, Europe in recent splits for being, like, low level and blah, blah, blah. That was such a bizarre game from the standpoint that, like, Peach was playing really well, like, Ignar was playing well and really well synergized with the team. Like... Otto was playing carries and looking like fucking 2015. Like, I, it was a really clean game. As I said, the only major error in that game was that 2v2 fight, which was just awful. But then they, uh, well, they didn't even match the play because there was no fucking jungler involved in the bot side. But Giant X obviously went top side and killed Yankos and um, Wonder as well immediately after. So, yeah, very strange. By the way, from what I've heard, basically all year, uh, Giant X have had like amazing scrims and horrible stage games until this last week when they had horrible scrims and amazing stage games. Again, giving more credence to, you know, win on uh, win scrims, lose on stage, and vice versa. But yeah, so obviously Fnatic go into this one fairly hefty favourites anyway, I would assume. Uh, but yeah, Nymera, what's the? Do you see an angle here where Giants can win based on that last week? Do you think Fnatic are vulnerable? based on uh, when they were last seen in action. Reminder, they had a chance, without having to rely on G2 fumbling the bag, to go top, and they fucked up. But luckily, G2 did as well. So what, what do you make of this matchup? Um, 
best of ones are kind of hard to tell trends with Giant X. This is always going to be the problem coming out of regular season. I'm still not sold on Jackie's versus Humanoid, and I think if Humanoid gets a leg up in lane, that is going to be a disaster. If Humanoid ever gets ahead of the lane on stuff like, I mean, if it's Azir, if that's back, um, Talia, Ari, you name it, I think that things are going to go very poorly. Way as well, so honestly. Yeah, yeah, his way is really good as well. So I think that's already going to be an issue. If they stick towards having Odo having um, pressure topside and you have... I, I think that they found themselves a pretty nice um, formula against um, against Heretics, right? Where they had Ignore on a creative mobile support like the Rakan, which allows him to be towards more of his, his, his kind of style. Yeah, Patrick on a lane dominant carry, which means that Ignore is unlocked to do something creative instead of something lane dominant instead. That helps. They went for the Varus Rakan. Awesome. Cool. That's great. Allows Ignore to roam across the map. Patrick to farm safely and towards bot side as well. Um, Jack is on the easiest laning champion of all time in Karma. Um, and then you have Odo on a carry top lane. You can just put everything towards top side. Odo can then get a load of resources and show that actually he can be a really top tier top lane carry on his, get on his good day. We see it once in a blue moon. For some reason, teams are still not really doing much you know to to stop him from well to enable that rather on the teams that he's actually on um i just don't know how many how deep this kind of style goes in regards to the champion picks they've got available to them can you have you know karma games which are going to be like that in a best of three against humanoid i don't think so i think with the form that you know Noah and jun are on as well i don't think you're going to necessarily get free laning phases against bot lane as well particularly if jun's on hook champions that can force fights so I think that, you know, there was some good stylistic things to allow Odo to actually control the pace of the game and allow him to actually be the big factor. That's good. I like that. I just don't know if that goes all the distance in a series play. I'll say they, uh, you know, I'll say they get one. I'll be generous. I think they'll get one based on how Fnatic also mucked around in their mid game and then, then they found out really. Um, I think that they can get one. I just don't think they have the draft to see it through multiple times. I was about to say, I think for me, the draft is the biggest issue. Uh, I think that Fnatic can do too many things in the draft that giant x cannot and more importantly cannot respond to effectively i think if you just go super lazily like line by line and think of the champions that you feel yes i'm comfortable that jackie's is playing this or yes i'm comfortable that uh peach is playing this etc i don't think that list goes too deep uh, for most of these players. So I think that is a big problem. I oh, think also just in terms of jungle pathing, I just feel like Peach is just not gonna have three different jungle paths to like if they lose in what I don't I think he'll have one game where maybe there's a good jungle star allowed. I just don't think that'll sink that much deeper yeah. if he gets Razork of all people. I think yeah, I think Peach Razork is kind of a nightmare matchup. I also think that Peach Jackies versus Razork Humanoid is a nightmare two v two matchup. Um I do think that Patrick gets away split after split season after season of basically soaking up zero of the blame for these lineups problems and i think patrick has actually been shit this split this is the first time uh, he's been like not good excuse me this is like the first time he's been like like, like and for the xl like uh, runs that's like the first time he's been like like the arguably the biggest problem uh well well, well, biggest problem, for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was about to say, were... like, but like the the Targamas uh, era, Patrick was egregiously bad. Like, even though oh, like Targamas last year was... as well. Well, yeah, I'm just saying. Oh, like, right, oh, I'm, right. I'm talking historically. He gets away with uh, usually gets away with not taking any of the blame, even when, as I said, with the Targamas lineup, for example, he was definitely Patrick was a big part of the problems there. Oh yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyway, uh, so yeah, I I just think that. They're going to get murdered in draft is my biggest fear. And the Razork-Peach um, matchup I also am very uncomfortable with. I do kind of feel like you almost want to go like the peach Lee Sin angle um, because it keeps Razork off you. And it Peach is legitimately mechanically competent on that champion he is a good lease in player oh um, boy multiple games of razzle poppy coming in to make that feel awful <laughs> yeah i mean but the thing is i i would rather if that's like if that's what i have to contend with i take that trade like even though that is obviously not ideal from a on paper perspective i would rather that than giving razork a jin Zhao or like just some kind of dueling or beat you to the lane matchup i don't want to see that because i think that is yeah peach is going to drown in that scenario in my opinion so i think this is very heavily fanatic favored i think this is not a good matchup 
for um, Giants at all, unfortunately. So I am going to say that Fnatic wins 2-0. Uh, what do you think about this one, Kira? So this is basically what you've got to ask yourself. Does like the bad version of Fnatic that plays like plays games like the Mad Lions game, does that show up? If that shows up, they can, in a practical sense, almost lose to anyone. So it's like the regularity in which that like shows up. Now, most likely it shouldn't really. Like you've kind of got to hope you come in on somewhat of playoff form, right? But against Mad Lions, they played five games and it showed up four of them. Like, yeah, that's fair actually. Like that was a really they played bad series. Yeah. So like they pl they played five games, right? Okay, and they they were like they were winning in four of the games and found creative ways to lose like two of them. You know what I mean? And they won the other like two. Uh, sorry, one one lost the other. Sorry, lost three of them. Won one of them and stopped the other. Like, like they're just such a strange team, and I'll never be convinced. That's why even when they beat G two, right? I didn't go on like a high horse. I'd be like, see everyone. I told you, like, uh, nothing. It's, I don't, it's so impossible to, like, know what the players, like, uh, uh, consistently evaluate and, like, on Fnatic and their, like, decision making. I can only look at their positives and hope to, like, those, like, show up to, like, carry them, f to carry them through. I do think they were less ropey this regular season than last regular season. But like, I would like to think so. They're now they're playing together like longer and longer and longer. But I st it's still I still don't get filled with any more level of like confidence of how many times consecutively I can watch them. Even like the games they do win, there's still like really ropey like segments to them. Like the the Fnatic never give you that SK game. Yeah, they sure. never give you That's that true. G2 game. Yeah. They never do, ever. It's always a heart attack sandwich. At every opportunity, it's like, you bite into it, and it's like, oh, that's nice mayonnaise, and it's like Scottish habanero chili right mm -hmm. in the middle of that bad boy, ready to just take your breath away. And I don't understand, like, why it's just so... It is just, um... So so consistent. Um, I like that. So I'll give it, like, in my balance of probability. I don't think they will. I think Fnatic should 2-0 them. I think Fnatic have to... G, um, they don't have, like, a way on GX to actually beat Fnatic when Fnatic play well, right? And so Fnatic has to lose the series in a practical sense, sure, okay? Yeah, makes sense. But I watched Fnatic not clear, like, flanking vision and lose to Frescove, and that's the type of thing that if you do that versus Ignar, you're basically giving them a golden ticket to beat your ass to a soundtrack. So... I don't know. I'm not. I'm not trying to say it's scary in terms of like, GX could just r like randomly win. I'm. I'm meaning it's scary in the, in the sense of like I still think Fnatic are fuck up artists. Like I, they've given me like no confidence during this re regular season. Like, to say that like they're in any given series. So, two zero Fnatic, but like, mm. oh, that's only the that, you know what I mean. Like, it's only predicated on the fact of like I think. Good Fnatic shows up more often than not, and when Good Fnatic shows up, they can beat majority of the teams in the league very consistently. See, but I, I mean, I will they film say... it. They film it with no confidence. Yeah, I think particularly against Gen X, I think you're right. When you know, looking back at the Mad Game, like Frescovi was like really pretty active and very mobile, and both him, Melioy, and also like even stuff like Azeri, right, is really really good at getting across walls and getting into a fight. Um, I don't really see Giant X playing a lot of like very mobile mid laners right now. I don't really think. I mean, I think you'd rather have Jackies on some that's, solid laning phase. So I think that's I think true. That's a factor against them. I'm so just like, saying what so, a so loot I, I loss think, can look like. Yeah, into, but I don't know if that loss is something that's possible by Giant X. I think it's right to highlight it for the future for this series. Like, that. Like, if, do you that think Noah? Uh, here's one for you. Do you think anyone think Noah is playing well right now? Mate, I think the way Noah's playing right now and is a disgrace. Like, I, I think the fact that they went six and three with Noah is like one of the greatest miracles that's ever. Bro, I think Noah's been fucking garbage. What's he good at? I don't think he's been good, but I wouldn't go that far just because. No, but, uh, but, the, the, but this is an indictment. I think on AD carry, I think AD carry play this year in EU has been fucking woeful. They went through bot lane, but what, 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 what do you make of super big top AD carry in the region self reportedly? Then will we get to that at some point? I mean, I don't know. Well, they call it super thing. <laughs> super thanks, I. You're allowed to have like an ego. I know he's not won anything, okay. but players have players have egos like all the time. Like people, there's there's certain players like. 
I, I can't remember who it was in the, the LPL. His name escapes me. He's never won, like, fucking shit. He has, like, a massive ego. You think Uzi didn't have a massive ego like, when he hadn't won anything by season eight? His ego was like that. Imp, Imp he, was, he, was pretty big on that. Too. Yeah, but Imp, Imp won him. stuff. He, he uh, Royal Roaded. He won, won straight away. Of course, his ego was massive. He had yeah. people, like, fucking home telling him he was really good. But see, I, I think Noah's right. Let's just get there quickly. I think Noah's being, like, a disgrace right now. And... I'd get, that's another thing Oscar's that gives, been like, no better confidence. than last split, though. Oscar was yeah, terrible he's still, in winter, he's still, and he's been marginally better this split. I think Oscar's been like really good. I actually think they've like entered Oscar a lot better. See, even that the the Mad Lion game against Merwin, Merwin had the counter pick Udia. Oscar done all the hard work of winning the matchup, one v one isolation, right? And Fnatic decided to just lose the map in every other places. Like, well, everywhere else. There was, so. there was a particularly egregious moment where he teleports back to top lane, completely ends the top lane laning phase by, like, getting all turret plates and freezing things off. But while Fnatic have overpushed on bot sides, kind of greeting for a dragon, then it's like, well, two things that... Uh, one, there are a couple of things wrong here. Either you hold the global to fight in a true 5v5, or you let that go through and just see, just play more safely on the bot side of the map. I, I don't know if Giant X are going to be, like, the macro team to punish them like that. And actually, you know... I started out. I think so. I, st I started off thinking that Giant X might take a game. The more I think about it now, I just don't think they are good enough with stuff like globals to really punish Fnatic going across the map and stopping Oscar and having that kind of individual lead. I initially would have said two on Fnatic. I wonder if I'm actually changing into two O Fnatic now because I just don't think that Jackie's is like gonna be part of that equation in terms of globals. I don't think that Odo wants to be teleporting away from Oscar Rinnan's lane and giving like Oscar Rinnan like huge advantages in that way too. That is the by the way as it. well how yeah. um, Giants not necessarily lost games but put themselves either behind or further behind it, earlier on in the split is Oddo TPing and a combination of him and all the team not capitalizing on that TP and then the maps just fucked. That, that was such a common theme in like the first two weeks for Giant X. Let, let me give you an example through an analogy here. Nymeria can maybe help me. I don't know if you'll agree with me. Right? Okay. BLG have got a really good early game. They might be one of the best early game teams in, in the world, right? How What are their bot lane dives early game like sometimes? The, and there we go. And then there, that is the beauty of the answer. Fnatic is an amazing early game team. But because, and they're really, really good, right, at finding early skirmishes and playing around bot. But when you watch some of their actual in, in individual games, like the outcomes of those, it, is like, it can be kind of depressing to like watch it. Because like the mistakes that they'll make or like the situ the situations they'll evaluate, like the time frame is correct, but like they'll like sometimes stagger themselves and then not go by like thirty seconds or like do something else, and it's really really strange. I can't put my finger on it, but I actually think I just... G two is a better example in that regard actually, because G two have been over, over pushing themselves in this last week. But yeah, I agree. Like you can be an early game team and still have some common pitfalls you go into. Fnatic, I don't really know what. I, I guess their one pitfall is that I think they can be quite disrespectful of globals and really fast follow up. I don't think that's uncommon. In they like to waste TP. Right now. Um, yeah, but yeah, they waste TP and that means they are, that's kind of part of, that's a part of- Yeah, like, no, no, I'm the, just- that, yeah, Yes, that is the cause to the symptom. Yes, you're right. They are not very good at, like, they're quite disrespectful with their own globals, which means that it's really helpful when they have Humanoid on the Talia to kind of, like, be the extra global to kind of, like, stymie that a little bit. But yeah, I think that the problem I have is that Giant X, I don't think they are good at leveraging very quick swaps from playing from top side to bot side with globals and stuff like that to then exacerbate that issue. I think other teams can start exacerbating that with Fnatic and exposing that. I don't think Giant X are that team. Yeah, I am Team Fnatic 2-0 as well. Uh, yeah. Right, let's move on to Heretics versus BDS, which I think is the kind of... Up, actually. Well, I think this is kind of the opposite of the Vitality SK one in a certain extent, where I think that that series could go any which way and nothing would surprise me at all. I think BDS are going to stomp Heretics. Um, if... Azir is enabled. Is Azir enabled for playoffs? I think so. It is? Oh, but Zvero is like a really good Azir too. I don't care. He's not as good as Nuke, and it's not as important for their drafting as it is for BDS. I think you can just first pick the Azir in this series. I think whichever team... I think Nuke no also it. plays a really mean, like, Orianna, and also plays a oh, very sure. good... Oh, so sure. I think both don't, of these mid laners mm, are happy Don't, with don't get me wrong. He's, it's not like Nuke's a uh, one-trick or something. Jeez. It's just how the assembly line of his champ pool works when you remove a Nazir does kind of fuck him a bit. That's fine. Um, By the yeah. way, what is wrong at BDS that, like, the minute Shio is playing well, 
Nuck and Adam have to start playing worse. What is wrong with this team? Imagine Shield was playing this way, last split with Nuck and Adam, how good they would have been. Uh, this, 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 don't worry, this series will be as comfortable as you like, by the way. I am predicting a boring, methodical 2 0, all lanes winning, like 2021 yeah. Rogue, and then instead of hitting Rogue time, they just end it because BDS are way better at team fighting than 2021 Rogue. Um, so yeah, I actually think this is not going to be particularly interesting. Um, I don't even have too much specifically to say. I think it's one of those situations where the matchups kind of speak for themselves in a way. I am obviously aware that Heretics have one more win, or is it two more win? I don't know, whatever. They have a better record coming out of regular season than BDS. But I think that BDS, um, I think it would be silly to say like, oh, they just cruise through regular season or whatever, like as if they're fucking G2 or something. But I just think BDS are superior in basically every facet of the game. I don't know what the winning angle actually is, for heretics outside of you hope that nuke and adam play worse which they might right like that's a very re as you hinted at that is a very realistic possibility like maybe they just don't play that well but especially with azir back in them in the uh, pool uh, nah, i i see comfortable 2-0 for bds um so yeah nymera what do you think about this matchup i i think it could be a 2-0 but i actually think it could be contested 2-0 you get what i mean i don't think like heretics is gonna get blown out i don't think so because i i actually really respect Vero. in fact he he had a great interview with um sheep esports by the way which it, that's a different topic but like that's some really fun stuff where he was effectively saying that he wasn't impressed by lec's team's professionality in scrims like if you were late to scrims in in like erls you'd be basically blacklisted yeah, whereas like true. there's a rule in lec where if people turn up late you play a solo queue game and you wait for them because like that's just a different atmosphere it's like well, what the hell this is my job i'm here to work folks and then the second thing was the reason he didn't get a shot earlier or like no it wasn't the reason that he didn't get a shot but basically he said well it's awkward to talk about but basically people don't get shots because friends want to play with each other and that's why the better yeah. players in the erls don't get a shot so like Go go read that interview. I think that while he tried, he was he was very professional about it. Actually, very diplomatic. But there's some real nuggets of gold in there. Um, and one of the things he said in that as well is like he had a good laugh at the fact that it felt like he was getting personally targeted by the Azir getting disabled for his entry into the LEC because this guy is really really good at mage play. When he won his um, his Amir Knight Masters title, a lot of it was with like very big Azir prior throughout the tournament that it got banned. He was big on Victor and Oriana. Besides that too. You know, if it does go to a mage matchup between him and Nuke, I think, you know, I think Nuke and the rest of the team will probably win. But I would be very interested to see how Zvera does in that kind of situation. I think he's actually a very good mage player. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, if you do have an off game from um, from particularly Sheo, I think if he's having an off game, I think this could be okay for Heretics. I really liked how Sheo and Labrov comboed up this last week, though, to the point where, like, you know... I feel like if Sheo and Labrov are on form, it really doesn't matter. I think Adam matters because the way that they play around, like the rest of the map, does determine Adam to have just an obnoxious one v one lead. But if you could have you could have any player in mid and AD carry, and this jungle support would still be making the same kind of plays, and I think that that's kind of really fun to see. Um, because you know, you can um, and I saw they're consistent, but yeah. I think both of them go towards just like the standard but stat stick kind of carry. Borrowing borrowing your term for that one, we'll make it stick one way or another. The stat stick is there, like. Do they have like a particular flavoring on their champion pool? Yes, you know, Nuke has sometimes has stuff like the Cassiopeia, but it's not like a, a huge overbearing flavor. Largely it's just mages and like team fight carries that two through items from ice as well. Um, yeah, I feel like, you know, if Shea or, or um, Labrov have a bad day and Yankos and Trimby have a good day and they step up to the equation, I, I don't see any reason why this couldn't be a close and fun series. I still think that BDS walk away with it, particularly because I don't think Wonder's champion pool stands up to Adams at all. Mm -hmm. I don't mind stuff like the Bruiser Rek'Sai. I don't think Wonder played it particularly well. This champion is meant to have infinite sustain and lost to a Pope champion in the Jace. Not a good sign. Um, but yeah, I think I think BDS probably walk away with the win. I'm I'm gonna give it a two-one. I'm gonna bet on Zvera with the Azir and and maybe players like Yankos and Trimby stepping up and. Um, Maybe one weak game from from either Adam or Sheo that kind of destabilizes the map to the way they can get into it. I think BDS win, but I'm hoping it'll be close and fun. I think you made one point that stuck with me there is that you know say well, Sheo and one out of that bunch did well <laughs> one of yeah the uh, that Sheo and and Labrov like if they play well it doesn't matter. I kind of I kind of think feel like that's the difference between the teams where it's like I feel that for basically all their players 
um, or other than ice, I guess, as you know, he is the stat stick, if you like. But I feel like if ad if like two of three, like if Adam and Lavrov have great series, they can't do anything. Like I, I don't think they can do it. And by the way, I think Trimby has probably been on aggregate the best support this split. Um, but I do yeah, think Lavrov's fell on fell off a little bit from. But what, uh, yeah, yeah, but. He has some, this is the thing, he has a couple, he's had a couple of games of split yeah. where it's like, you are easily the best support in the region. Like, you're just shitting on everyone. And I think, again, of course, it's always going to be like a form thing or whatever, but like, Labrov can do things in support that Trimby would never even see in his own dreams. Like, and Adam obviously is a completely different tier of player. It sounds harsh because, you know, he's a GOAT candidate for top lane in the West. But at this moment in their careers, like when Adam is on song, when it does land heads, he's a completely different game changing player to wonder. Like he just is. He's just so much better, like but, on those days. Okay. Right? Here, here's, the, here's the crazy hypothetical for, for you, right? Because this is an interesting, and I'm not like out to get someone like Satch, right? Okay. What value do you think Wonder supplies to this team in terms of like winning, actually winning the game? I think I think there's one specific one. I've talked about this before, and I think it's an right. under, I think it's an underrated point. Um, but obviously, it's not like crazy value. But I also don't think, feel like they play to this that much, so that it's not really that utilized. I do think again, and you're going to say this is kind of niche, and it is kind of niche, but it's also important. Wonder, I still think, is the best player in Europe at surviving ganks. Like I, I, I there's nothing I just, wrong with that. Yeah, no. But right. but it's like if if they always geared towards I don't know playing for flak or playing for mid like just play, playing for hold the bot side or whatever and that was like and they do just basically like never pick like if they never counter pick for wonder like he's always just getting the brunt of it uh, to survive basically and be useful later on in top lane and that was like their play style I think he would have massive value because that would then become like the entirety of his role. I think the problem is that Wanda isn't always in that situation. In fact, very often isn't in that situation. And at that point, I don't think he is a net positive. He's just there. He's just breathing oxygen. So yeah, I think generally speaking, not much value. But again, and I that's do the think the problem against Adam is that Adam yes. forces you to interact. Like of all the top players in EU, Adam's the one that forces you into interacting in a one v one the most, probably for yeah. better or for worse. But but most of the time for better for his team. Because I, I carried it out right. Okay, and this is going to be this is going to sound crazy. Right? It's just one thing. Wonders carried like a single game. I know carried like fucking useless term. Right? Okay, play fucking garbage uh, but i don't even actually think he's generated his like own advantage <laughs> i don't think he's had a lead in any game right and it right okay and he, i don't think it's like i've ever seen him generate his own and this is something wonder used to be amazing at by the way right mm. on g2 generate his own advantage and then move it and like use it to bring it to bear like in other like places with like tp flanks or mm. like on like specific matchups that he understood really really well or like in split push like wonder was like one of the marquee like tier one in the world split yeah. pushers right in oh, terms of season eight that was the way that g2 won games yeah like, exactly you look right? back at like g2 rng and that world's run a lot of it is just split pushing really well played so the, if you're looking at heretics here and you're looking at the upward mobility of this team you've got flats playing pretty well you've got trimby jekyll and hyde man but you've managed to take his medicine and stay like human. So that was why he was always so funny when he was on Fnatic. Because even though I was always saying he was an amazing player, the actual the team would maybe be better with actual less variants on it, which yeah, yeah. kind of actually happened. Um, I don't think June's even remotely as good as Trimble. Oh no, yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. But let me just say, I am actually perplexed at what the where this team is supposed to go from here and what they expect Wonder to be in this team moving forward. Because I do not think the way that Wonder is playing right now. Either this team needs to decide this or wonder, like, it's going to make the, you know what I mean, win the game, win you more games, like, break, take you to the next stage of, like, trying to beat G2 and Fnatic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, does wonder on the team, like, do that? It'll be funny if they do end up doing that and this gets clipped and I end up in another montage this time I'm speaking, but all resources say that that is not going to happen. Oh, don't, don't even worry, don't even worry about that, by the way. The thing that people forget right about the whole tier list thing and by the way even one of you or both of you or whatever even were like questioning it slash asking for clarification and i kept saying this is not a winter tier list this yeah, is a no. tier list for the season mate let's put it this way 
if, if we all like dogs, go, we all I'm like... gonna be I'm gonna be making a montage in about four months from now, looking like a fucking genius, mate, with mad lions and K Corp <clears throat> like that, ninth and tenth oh, at the tell bottom. You what was so funny with that is that um Gilius had like a video ready to go for when Mad Lions inevitably crashed and burned in winter, and they made it to the fucking finals. He was like, Well, I gotta fucking release it anyway, because I've gotten the effort of making this now. And he's got like all of the bad plays after they've walked away from finals, just like, well, that is really that, that is hashtag that. not the move, but just to be nah, clear, no. that is a, I, absolutely I, I not the move. I found that so funny, by the way. Also, <laughs> like, have some have some fucking you know belief in your own opinions and keep it there, toasting in the oven. You know, set it to a slightly yeah, colder temperature. You know, professional hater. slow cook it. <laughs> yeah, you got to slow cook that baby. But, but like you were talking about teams winning like fraudulent ways, like Heretics had some. Like they required like. Humanoid and Noah to both disattach their brains, and usually you can only rely on Noah for that. So like they they clipped a win off of like Fnatic doing that, and that looks really sexy because they're the number one team. But it, it, it's not all that replicable, like convincing Humanoid to go melee range to Elise in. So when I look at this game, I, I I would be really I'd be surprised if Heretix takes a single game off of like BDS. We were talking about SK Gaming having like pretty poor like team fighting. I actually think Heretics as a team like don't excel in any like given area. And the thing that I thought with the team on with the members on the team that they have, I thought they would excel at. Those strengths haven't really come through. So I don't really know. Like, do you think, like, for example, we could get like a, you, they could like get a flat like Draven game in here and get a free win off of that? They need like, to. They you, need to. This yeah. is the thing. This is the problem with Heretics. Is in a lot of matchups against the top teams, they have three losing lanes. Like personnel wise, they have three losing lanes. Right. Um, I think you know who'd be great on Heretics actually is Photon. Photon yeah. would be great on Heretics. And Larson. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I, I'm I'm, that, uh, I'm, I, I don't know. He his his gameplay is aging like Lindsay Lohan a bit. I'm I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, don't get me wrong. He's still like he's still decent, but he he, he you know Bro, you know what pissed me off about? Say, no, no. Can I just say one thing? Humanoid got to run it during certain sequences, right, of the split, and because he was on a much better team, right, he yeah. had in weeks and entire splits of being mediocre to fine yeah. to a dog, right, okay, and then because he won in the finals at the very end, and he got to wear the little silver Burger King trophy, it all looks sexy and it doesn't get him written off, right. Larson has had like two pretty bad for Larson splits, like back to back, and all of a sudden Larson can never be good again. So the yeah. last four years of well, competitive I, League of Legends, think... of unbelievable command on, literally can call upon himself to just give fucking Yagao dick and nuts at Worlds, right? Nah, that guy, he can't ever be good again. But that's just League like, of Legends I think the fans, problem though, is, like, I think the problem for Larson is actually meta, where you can't just rely on I'm a good team fighter to win from mid lane particularly. I think you can from AD carry. If Larson was an AD carry right now, he'd be fucking balling. Because this guy's really good at getting himself uh, resources and just turning up to team fights when he's needed. Right now, from mid lane, you need to have presence outside of lane, and I just don't. I just think Humanoid's got a better angle on that in terms of side lanes. As oh well. yeah. By the way, on the yeah, on the Larson thing, I mean, even though obviously that's a load of nonsense, like you know that anyone could have that take. Larson has been legitimately not very good, and he's done it in like the most egregious way possible as well, where he has been playing for KDA. Like straight up, I can do, and you know what? Something like, oh, vo show me in the vo I can, I can make a five minute VOD video of him indisputably playing for KDA in different moments. This split, it's ridiculous. Or this year, I should say, this split that'd be a stretch. Um, but yeah, like that Ari game, but you know, the you know, the meme, I really want to make this meme, you know, the meme of like, um. Oh, I can't remember what the context is, no, but it's like about last night, it's like the black guy sick. licking his lips and then he's like shaking his tail like a cat or whatever, you know? Yeah. That was him playing Ari at the top of that fight, not moving. He literally does this for five seconds. He's just clicking back and forth, back and forth while the whole fight is happening. And he's like, oh, it's lost. Leaves. And people Larson like to... has two of the worst professional Ari games of all time that I can remember. In fact, the first game, one of the very first games I ever cast in LEC was 9-0 Rogue versus zero nine and stralis and larson picks ari and fucking runs it so that was one game and then there were two games after that so that was in 22 spring and then two games after that he had the 
Um, the static Shiv ever frost Ari that never auto attacked. And in fact, he did more damage to himself with auto attacks by auto attacking a Tibbers with a fucking. I remember shiv that. that. Yeah. So that was like, so I sat there and was like, oh my god, he's picked a Shiv Ari with the AP scaling on it and done absolutely nothing with it. Auto attack like two times in like MT fights. And then he built Rod of Ages Ari like a couple of games later. I'm just like, this feels like a personal attack against me <laughs> in terms of Ari builds. Because like. Uh. He's he's actually been better on it like this when this spring than he was before. But even then, it's just like he's just not finding the aggressive angles, which is just like, it yeah, it's not very forgiving on a champion like Ari. You'd like in late game, in early game, you're, you're like you can be pretty forgiving on it. In late game, like you do need to pull your own stunts a lot of the time in the current meta. Yeah. He's just not doing that. And PSA, by the way, no one, none of you, no one is allowed to have any sympathy for him and be like, if he was on a good team, he made this fucking bed. He was a free agent. He had plenty of options. Oh, yeah. He chose this. So, you know, that's that's your well, own apparently, hell. Apparently, he wanted to play with uh, Mark Unizoilis. I think that's that's who he wanted to play with. Yep, well. there we go. Um, the proof that players are terrible judges of other players. There's strikes again. Although the ultimate joke is that maybe Perks actually did an okay team building job this time, just forgot to remove himself from the lineup. So, oh god, it just reminds you me of that. You, you know that really, I mean, it had a great soundtrack, but what did, did you watch Tron Legacy, Legacy, the second Tron movie? There was that one moment later on where it's like, Oh, what she's doing? She's removing herself from the equation as like she does this noble <laughs> self-sacrifice. We just got to that point in Perks' career arc where he's finally removing himself from the equation. Except it was forced with a gun to the back of his head. But yeah, outside of that, I agree. Uh, right, let's move on to our final matchup, which is, of course, G2. The very human-looking G2, I might add, based on, uh, well, the whole regular split, really, um, versus Mad. Though, as I said on Twitter, it's... To me, it just doesn't matter if they gone nine zero or like five four. I probably feel the same about this matchup, and indeed the rest of playoffs. Unfortunately, what really needs to happen is Fnatic need to just go on some crazy tear to set up a game where going into it we think they might actually have a chance. Uh, but for me, this is not that matchup. Um, I think that the problem with a new team like when Mad Cut came into the league, for example is everyone else who hasn't done like shitloads of previous research or had the experience of playing against a Merwin type player or whatever. They basically like, you know, a good UFC fighter or something get to use round one and round two to just download all the data, work out what the fuck they're actually doing and then just Anderson Silver in the Matrix and just absolutely embarrass them. Uh, maybe <coughs> an extreme example, but the point is they have no chance in this matchup and yes g2 are prime anderson silver in this matchup so yeah i don't see this going any way but one which is a comfortable g2 win um i think especially as that series they had last split obviously in the final was kind of it sounds silly but to me that's kind of like their best chance of beating g2 in a way right because it is okay this is sort of unexpected there's no pressure. We get to throw everything we have at you in terms of all our interesting angles and unique picks and so on. And G2 were not like on some blazing tear or something like that. It was the greatest ever, you know, performance that we've seen. Caps, Caps was playing awesome. But, you know, Broken Blade prior to that hadn't had an amazing playoffs. Hans and Mickey had had not particularly good splits. And that was still pretty comfortable for G2. Um and also, so, yeah. Mad got a lead in bot lane every game, which is like how Mad get ahead, and they yeah. still lost with that. Yes, too. that's a and... huge weapon. Like, folks, are we really gonna pretend this is anything else but Mad? This is this game, this series is G two versus G 2s concentration. Like, <laughs> yeah. there, is, there is there is no other way you can phrase this. The only way that G two loses is that they're just not focused. The, yeah. Most of this split, when I looked at the games, I'm like, well, they've just lost their focus. Like that because yeah. th that's what we know about these G two players now. Sometimes they will just have those moments that like they just lose the plot a little bit. And um, that's uh, and the most. Caps is middle like Caps's late laning phase has been off. BB's laning phase has been off. I think bot lanes three v threes have been off with the Ike as well. This is just G two versus themselves. Yeah, I mean, and that's the most dangerous thing for me for G two is that there's a double elimination bracket. So it's like, I feel like if you put G2 in a position where it's like, you cannot lose, then they definitely won't lose. But 
they might if it's like not everything like not all the chips are pushed to the middle you know mickey will probably coast or whatever by the way again and i don't think kira's actually been doing it this split or maybe i'm wrong but i don't think you did the the whole best players per week thing this split, i'm did doing you? it at the very end oh, okay you're doing it at the very end i'm gonna I'm, I, the re i'll tell you what i do Good. yeah but I, so what the reason i bring that up is i don't want this to be like lost in you know the ether or whatever mickey has been straight garbage this split like fucking horrible yes you'll be able to pick to a game or two where he hasn't been but overall generally he's been shit absolute shit he's probably like sit it well if dos's performance hadn't kind of fallen off a little bit he'd be like sixth or seventh on the support list like at best he's been fucking horrible but i don't want people to see g2 have a good playoff run and then give this little bastard you know all pro are they even doing all pro for this play? i don't know but anyway he doesn't deserve it shouldn't be anywhere near the conversation it's completely egregious um so yeah but i'm not going to pretend like based on that that i think oh maybe mickey will into this series like no odds on g2 will you know have their head screwed on and they'll win this comfortably um but yeah kira what do you think about this series okay, okay. that's gonna be crazy right i don't know how it's happened but it's happened twice this should be if anyone's going to do it the most beatable version of g2 because and let me go, let me go here it's not that they're solved, but the, a lot of the cluster like bot lanes, like there there is less value in Han Sam and Mickey X having Callista because the other teams have gotten better at playing into th those style of bot lanes because they have been played so much and the matchups are more figured out. Like as in like you don't the G two don't get as much of an advantage as they used to for Han Sam and Mickey X being like the best. Callista bot lane executioners. Now they're probably yeah, kill lanes they, are harder to play right now than they were in Windsor. They still have value, I think, but they have less value than they did in Windsor. Yeah, but I also think other teams have just got specifically Callista, not Draven, uh, the, not the Draven bot lane. Uh, the teams have gotten better at playing against the Callista bot lane, um, in particular. Um, setting the ball, the like the champion pool ADCs for Yike is like not as like sexy. As a usual, sorry, not for Yike, for Hans Hammer, is not as good. Um, I, I, I find it like really weird sometimes. Like, uh, you know, I don't think that's going to gonna be true on fourteen six because remember the crit changes are coming through. So I think what, that changes ten percent extra crit damage on, on IE. Edge. So it's changed a lot because it means yeah, that, no, I know. So, so it like so makes Jinx, up Jinx little... was fringe. I think Jinx is going to be back. Hans is a great fucking Jinx. I think Aphelios is going to. Ah, that'll tell me. Them. By the way, ten percent um, crit shouldn't change when they're not a champion it, because you only crit on average sixty percent of the time. So on the sixty percent crit, it's only a six percent increase in damage. If you were to increase the APS scaling of a, an ability by six percent and that made the champion playable, everyone would be like. Well, I think that what? it means the fringe crit carries are now much better I, I think particularly jinx is the one that's gonna be pushed over the edge like that's the one which was already playable so i think like yes i would agree before this but i think that i mean i think that the champions you've lost are lucian has fallen off quite a bit now i think that he can be played a bit but he's not as easy to play at the two item mark um i think three items he kind of takes a step up again three four items depending on how many tanks there are in the game because again like the infedge and then lord doms are like really val valuable um in their own ways but like if you can get towards a strong ie build it's pretty right. strong I think that um, you, because double support items aren't around because that was really big in winter, that's a big thing. So that's one that's gone. I think you've said that Callista. Yeah, Callista, I feel like I don't think you G2 are playing as, as well as other teams are across the world. But are you ready for are you ready for their games? I, I, I think a lot of people are letting them skate on piss ice, okay? You ready for G2's games? You ready? These are the games. And Kansama uh, does do a lot for draft because he requires permabands, right? So he plays Smolder game one, wins. Plays Cogball game two, wins. The combo's respectable. He then plays Draven, wins, Smolder loses, Draven, Draven, Smolder, Callista. That's a split. So it was Smolder, Draven, all year, and then a Callista and a Cogmo game. If you told me Han Sam was going to get to play one, two, three, four games of Draven, eh, three games of Draven and a split, I'd be like, first of all, yeah, what the fuck's going on in draft, right? And second of all, like, yeah, he's going to look really good. Like, did, did, did all, I understand, like, you, sometimes you need to let it through, or sometimes you think it's like, come on, like letting Han Sama play play like Draven games. It's like, I, what would he have played in those games that wasn't Draven? I understand they were left open, but it's like, if, and I went and looked, and I was like, it's not actually as like good as what you would think it is. I actually think, and this is another point I was gonna get to. I, 
I, I don't look think Han Sama is as consistent or as money this split as has been. I don't think Mickey X is consistent or as money. I don't think the bot lane is even like in terms of execution is like the best bot lane in Europe, which I think is a bonkers thing to say. So, I don't think, I think that will apply later into playoffs. I just don't think it's going to. I think against Super and Alvaro, who have not been nearly as good as uh, as, as they were in their winter iteration. But Mad Lions have got an emergency in... button they can press, which is a loyal go bottom all the time for Super and Alvaro. They could front run with the way G two are playing right now. They could front run. Oh, their three v three vault lane have not been fantastic, but I just feel like. G2 might be able to just lock in like Jinx Aphelios and they'd be fine with that. And typically I've not M liked Hansama on the Aphelios for this team when it is against high pressure bot lane and against the other team. I think with the way that Infinity Edge buffs are coming through, I think that will push them over the edge at like the 20, like but the 2-3 the, the item mark. Super gains from the Jinx, super gains from the Jinx change as well. And yes, but then you get the Draven into you and I think that's the issue then. So. Yeah, but uh, also, so that's under the pretext that I think you should yeah. like perma ban it again. I think if you, I think if you're in Europe and you're letting Hans Hammer play Draven, uh, and this yeah, is the I other point I was going to That's straight running it down, yeah. Right? Sure. Here's an, the other one we'll get to where I think, this is, I don't think G2's drafting has been anywhere near as good. I think the they've Nazi lost. The game was very bad. But, with that. but just they in like general, I even think the game they played against Vet, like I think that team comp, the uh, Leona. Callista, Are, Vago, Zach get comp into Vet, mm. the last game of the season. Don't I don't think that team comp like particularly good like at all. I think it was so short range, really high to execute a specific target, to reset the Are and to reset the Vago. There's a lot I really didn't like about it. So in terms of the consistency of like of what you can like demand on, it's like yiking caps into like BB like using his like counter pick flexibility. But if you're going to beat like G2 and send them to their best, it would be in the, the BO3. And this happened to them before, by the way, in the previous lineup with Rogue. It was in the BO3 that they ended up in the lower bracket because Malrang just like yeah, yeah, fucking. Yeah, the early yeah, done show, crazy yeah. shit to them. If it, I'm t I'm not saying it's likely. But I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is, and specifically in the BO3, like, and you go one game down and you've got, you're onto another game. I think it's way more likely, and I think of any team outside Fnatic, Mad Lions would be the team to like do it. Like two really weak, strange like like draft setup or a game where they just flip bot lane early and it goes against G two. I don't think it's that out of the question. Like if a loyal's going bot lane into a matchup into Yike, I don't think the plays like sixty five favored like G two. I genuinely don't. Like I think it was way no, way actually, way like watch, one of the big things which stuck out to me about G2 recently was actually that when Yike has gone bot lane the 3v3s have been ropey. Yeah, they're um, really ropey and they used to be the best. I think even in winter that was the case too. Yes. I was talking about that like yeah, G2 against Carmen Core in winter. Really good example of this where G2 pick up a win in 3v3 but they shouldn't have. Like the way they play this out was really bad and that wasn't even like the only game where that happens. Like there are chances there. I just feel like right now Caps for Nile for Scofa. Um, given that for, yeah, I mean, I think Craps didn't have a great last week, you know, against, um, VTO, he really got, really got beaten up in the Ari versus Oriana matchup. We already talked about VTO finding his own, own way to that. Frescovi is, you know, I mean, I think things change when you have Azir back on the table. I think that, you know, Frescovi is a fine Azir. Caps is one of the best Azirs in the region, though. That's, you're not going to get that one for free. Um, so yeah, I think overall, there are some worrying points for G2, but I still feel like this is G2 against their own focus. Like, if G2 turn up and, like, bot side 3v3s are not just, like, randomly being pissed into the wind, I think that, um, I think that Mad are not gonna have an easy run of it. I think that the champion pools in bot lane, if Hans and Mickey are focused, is, is gonna be a huge issue for them as well. Um, I think we're looking kind of, like, through the Doctor Strange lens right now in terms of, like, if G2 is on this form where they're not focused and we're kind of looking back to the, the best of threes, then yes, it is possible, but I still think this series is entirely G2 versus their own selves. I think it's way G2 favoured, and even if like Mad get into games, people like Caps and Yike can just take wins away from like anyone within the region. So there's a lot to go against them. And it's just, but this just this regular split, G2 did not fill me with confidence. They basically won <laughs> three games by a scaling smolder and three games by Draven. It's like okay, so of the so, and I'll I'll always give G2 the benefit of the doubt because they've earned it. But of the what the regular seat, I can't ignore the fact because that's what we use to analyze. I can't ignore the fact that teams basically handed them like free ones. Now, not everyone can. That's part of G2's skill set is that they can convert those into free ones. But Smolder as free ones isn't going to exist in the next patch, yeah. And what you're going to rely on getting Draven on all those games? Like, I, I don't know. Like to me, 
there is something a little bit to be worried about if I was like a G2 fan looking at this game. I don't think it's as free as it looks. I think G2 is favoured. I would say like G2 2-1, in my opinion. I, um, but how dominant each of those two games is going to be, I think there's like a massive metric. I also think there is like a genuine like lose angle here. Like I think G2 could play well in their current form and still lose because they flip the game a little bit too early and get caught and tied up into stuff that really isn't all that like grit. Yeah, my my two things are I, I think this is very G2 favoured. I think if Mad were sort of as fresh as they were, if you like, in winter, then they'd have a legitimate chance in a BO3 to like catch G2 off guard. I think I don't want to say like G2 have figured them out or what however you want to put it, but I think that G2 aren't going to be easily surprised. And I also think that El Yoya's propensity to camp bot for whatever reason has just not happened nearly as much as this split. Maybe they'll go back to it in playoffs. Who knows? But that has to be like hope so. an angle for winning because if they don't do it, I think they have zero chance of winning. If El Yoya's not flipping bot, then they cannot win this series, in my opinion. I think Broken Blade's seen like everything under the sun. I don't think Merwin's going to be like bodying him or something with his weird shit. And I think that, yeah, I, I, I think El Yoya has if, to camp bot. If G2 drafts team fight, by the way, like uh, on two lanes as well, I think that also is just an instant loss. Like if you get like another like... Um... Well, the Zier Cannon, yeah. Yeah, Zier Cannon. Well, and, like, and, and the reason yeah. for that, because what I was going to leapfrog off of that with, is the fact that Mad Lions are one of the worst, like, flanking teams in terms of oh, setting the, up their in the league. G2 are by far the best. So, yeah. like, if you go into team True. fights where flanks are remotely a possibility, like, Mad do not have the vision control understanding. And this is the big thing after Winter. Like, the start of the split was effectively, look, I think Mad can be good, but I don't think they'll ever realistically beat G2 when they're online because they don't have the vision control understanding to stop G2 getting that one flank wall, which ends the game. And I think that yeah. could be a problem here. Um, yeah, I think it's a huge Chris Colby's the best stuff. flanker on Mad. It tells you everything you need to know about, like, the and... Uh, of all the teams, go watch that Merwin Aatrox game if you ever get a chance, guys. Watching their dragon setups, I would love to be their coach and be mm -hmm. sitting with their coach and just watch as like his hairs turn grey and like well, the fingers. Farming core when Merwin's on the Akali as well has a fantastic individual lead. Can't flank with it to save his life. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, uh, G two. 2-0. I think Nymera said 2-0 as well. Yep. Kira going for a spicy 2-1 with a possible. 2 1. Like G2 are still the best team. Like like G2 I still believe in G2 supremacy. It's just bait I'm analyzing on what they showed me. Like there's a there's a version of this game where G2 just come out with like scorched earth policy and just sure. run the jewels jewels on like mad lines. It's just like current form. I'm not thought that Mad Lions current form's all that great. It's just there's a version of Mad Lions that can be fielded that could give G2 some trouble. Yeah, and I do agree that obviously a BO3 is going to be your best chance of doing that. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's going to be it for this week's My Anime List. And uh, we will see you next time.